Boy, land lovers, we're back for more Core 19 drafting. Uh, I'm recording this the same day as the last one, which went up on YouTube, which is why I'm wearing the same Azoria shirt. And uh, yeah, we're still in the window where we get to do half cost entry quick drafts for Magic 2019, which is a great deal. So I, I, I'm, I'm literally just losing money not doing it. So I'm going to draft again. Probably don't have time for a third, even if people wanted to watch it, which I don't think they do. But, uh, yeah, we should have time to fit in another one. Stream might be going late. We'll see what happens. Uh, I should probably actually switch over to my arena screen and not just click over to it so that people can actually watch what's going on. How are you guys doing in chat? You guys excited? I'm excited. Just like I get to spend another 2,500 coins, which isn't really that many coins, to gain some gems. Really have to make up for that lost draft that never happened. We do have our deck master uh, overlay up again, so people in chat have a better idea of what cards do, which is nice because we've got this brand new format and some new cards. Uh, looking at this pack, well, I feel like we have a pretty easy decision here. So, like, Nightmare's Thirst is an interesting card. It goes in the black-white life gain deck, which, as we've seen in the past, can be quite strong. However, this is a much better card in the black-white deck. So, like, it's very feasible to be playing heavily in just white or black and play this card and still have it be good. Whereas something like this, you definitely have to play black, you definitely have to have life gain. Like, this card, you probably don't splash it if you don't have some amount of incidental life gain, but the effect on it is so strong, and it's so much better than anything in this pack, right? Like, what are our alternatives? Essence Scatter is fine. It's removal, but it's kind of situational in a couple ways. We do have an Electrify. Electrify is quite good. It is also, you know, just one color, which isn't nothing. You know, taking a gold card early runs some kind of risk. Um, but, like, other than those, like, what are we taking? This, like, rare that's meant for, like, modern constructed? No, we're not taking this. Make a stand is, like, only good if you're already in, like, the red-wide, red-white-wide aggro strategy. Mighty Weep is enough. All these cards are We're gonna take the Reek Bloodlord and see what happens. Okay, what do we have here? Uh, Fell Spectre is quite strong. Our opponent, uh, last draft played one of these against us. It ended up being pretty good. Uh, it made us discard a dragon, and then it killed us because it had a Blanchwood armor on it. I think that was that game. Uh, anyway. It's, you know, it's a 1-3 flyer, so the stats aren't incredible. The flying is relevant. And the fact that it's a 1-3 means it can block some things. Um, but, like, the fact that it makes them discard a card is the most important part. And then it also just randomly makes them lose two life when it comes into play. So it does, like, a bunch of good things. Uh, it's on color for our first pick. I mean, the other best cards in this pack are, like, Disperse is good. I don't think I'd take Disperse over, like, anything else in this pack that I like. Which include Angel of the Dawn, which would also be good in our deck. And if we knew for sure that we were going to be able to make, like, a lot of tokens off the Bloodlord, I think I'd consider this a little more highly. But this early on, I think it's possible we might just end up in some sort of control strategy where we just want to get into the late game and we'll get some tokens out of this, but not necessarily enough that, like, pumping all our creatures by one is, like, insane. Uh, Bogart Brute, I've said many times, is a card I like more than I'm supposed to. I do think it's a little better in this format than... I think Magic Origins might be the only other time it was printed. Maybe one other time. It's usually okay. I think it's a little better than that here. Um, but I think it's definitely between the white and black cards, which makes me feel good about our first pick. And I do think I like the black card a little better. Ooh, a second Fell Spectre. I mean, they technically get better in multiples in some extent. I mean, the trick to that is, discarding is like a weird thing in black, because if you make them discard all the cards in their hand, then they can't discard any more cards, and so like making them lose four life per discard isn't super exciting. What about the gloves? The, so the rogue's gloves was in the last pack. It's an equipment that I believe it's two to play and two to equip. It says when uh, the, the equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, you get to draw a card. Um... It's not something I take super highly, because there's a lot of decks where it turns out not to be particularly good. It's good mostly in, like, evasion-heavy decks, so I think things generally like a blue-white flyers deck or with, like, blue unblockable creatures. Sometimes, like, a blue-red, like, menace and, like, tempo style where you, like, bounce their thing so they can't block for a turn. It's, it's good enough there that you're getting the extra value that it's worth taking there. Um... 
other cards that we were actually considering out of this pack, we've got Angel of the Dawn again. We have, we have basically the same pick as before. And interestingly, I think this is a little more appealing after we already have the one Fell Spectre. There's also Skeleton Archer this time, which is pretty good, but not, like, insane. Um, again, it feels like the best cards are, are generally in the color. Like, Rabbit Bite is good. I, I'm increasingly, like, a little less impressed with it. It's not by any means a bad card. It's certainly a high pick if you're green. Um, Draconic Disciple I've talked about. I like this card. It's pretty good, but, like, we're not close to that after our first two picks. So taking a gold card in two off colors seems bad. I think it's a lot closer now between the Fell Spectre and the Angel of the Dawn. Um, it's possible that even Skeleton Archer might be a better pick than this, the Fell Spectre. I'm just really not sure about this at this point. Um, this feels really close. I kind of want to hedge... like. This early in the format, I feel like hedging is like a nice way to sort of get some data on this. So while this might not be the correct pick, I think I might lean towards the Angel of the Dawn. We don't want to take too many super heavy picks this early. So like maybe that's another argument for one of the other just like four mana cards, but we're not getting something like super cheap this pack anyway. Hmm. Gosh, I don't know. Something about this is weirdly appealing. I'm gonna try it. <laughs> Might not be correct. Ooh, there we go, a Vampire Neonate. So, this pack is, like, not super exciting. We, I don't think we've actually seen this yet. Here's Psychic Corrosion. I've sort of mentioned it in the past. This is the enchantment that you want if you want to go in the blue milled strategy. Where every time you draw a card, your opponent has to, like, put two of the cards in their deck into their graveyard. So in a long enough game, this, like, kills them probably, you know, well, considerably before you'll deck out because, you know, they're doing it twice as fast now. Well, sort of three times because they're still drawing cards? Um, red seems very present in this pack, but it doesn't indicate that it's strongly open. These cards are, like, very okay. Uh, Hired Blade is pretty subpar. Like, if there was, like, a better black card or even, like, better white card, like, Locks on Linebreaker is whatever. Super replaceable. A Vampire Neonate is a repeatable life gain effect for this Regal Blood Lord. So I'm gonna take it. Uh, so what do we have here? Again, it's kind of feeling like these colors are open, which is good. Um, maybe we're supposed to take the cavalry? This is kind of a tough one. Like, Child of Night has life gain on it, but this card's, like, not super exciting in this format. There's a lot of, like, random one tough or one power tokens to trade with it. Uh, there's a lot of, like, 1-3s, like, Fell Spectres and Druids of the Cowl and whatnot. I think Gallant Cavalry is the strongest card in this pack. It's not incredible. Uh, it would be better if we had something like an Angel of the Dawn, but shut up about it. Um, I don't think we're going to be so hard up for 3s that we would rather take this very mediocre card over this pretty good one. So I think I take this and don't really look back. Um, don't particularly want anything from this pack. This is kind of a late Druid of the Cowl, but so far green hasn't strongly seemed open. There's that one Rabid Bite, but that was only like third pick or something. Uh, I think we're supposed to take the Knight's Pledge, although there's not an extremely high chance that it makes the deck. It could, but like this kind of deck isn't super keen on doing this. Uh, worth noting that this is also a late Sift. It's a card I haven't seen very often, but is quite strong. Four mana, draw three cards, discard one. Generally gives you a chance to, like, discard a land from somewhere in the top of your deck and give you two or three relevant cards in its place. Um, I mean, the best cards in the pack are definitely the Sift, the Druid of the Cowl. This pledge isn't even that good. Maybe I'm just supposed to take the Sift and stay kind of open. Yeah, I like that. Like, Knight's Pledge is pretty whatever. Um... Doomed Dissenter, Rise from the Grave. Well, we've seen how annoying Rise from the Grave can be if you have something really good like a Regal Bloodlord. This makes me feel slightly better about um, not taking another 5-drop earlier. And depending on the way the game goes, maybe being able to bring these back and make them discard more could also be good. Um, Desecrated Tomb is kind of an interesting card. Whenever creatures leave your graveyard, make a 1-1... 
black bat creature token with flying. It's not going to be good in draft. There aren't, like, consistent enough ways to, like, remove things from your graveyard. Like, you could get a rise from the grave and make one bet at the cost of three colorless mana. Yay. Um, Disperse is good. Doom Descender is okay. I don't want to take it over, like, a real card. Like, this is kind of a late rise from the grave. I'm definitely taking this. Um, here I'm pretty happy to take Doom Descender over not much. I mean, there is a Snapping Drake. It's, like, kind of a late Snapping Drake. Maybe we're supposed to be, like, blue-black. Splashing the white. Hmm. Are we supposed to be blue black? Blue has kind of seemed open after these last couple picks. Doom to Center is like not extremely mission critical. The Drake's a little harder to get. I'm gonna take this and hedge a little bit. Let's also bring the Sift back in for now. Uh, this is not the lifelink one, this is the flying one. Um, what do the blue cards do? Two creatures can't be blocked this turn. Eh, it's more of like a red blue deck kind of thing. Gearsmith Prodigy wants artifacts. We're probably not going to be heavy on that. I'm going to take this Bog Stomper, but I, I, I'm not going to play this Bog Stomper. Um, I guess I'll take Invoke the Divine for the sideboard. Frilled Sea Serpent's okay. It's not great. It's usually pretty easy to get one of these if you want it. You probably don't want more than one, even if you want one. Invoke the Divine if we do end up being white. If, like, white's open in pack two and we just stay in the white-black plan. Um... Then, like, not only is this a useful sideboard card for getting rid of artifacts and enchantments that could be useful, but also it just gains four life, so it, like, triggers our life gain effect. Uh, also, we get a free failed sea serpent anyway, over, like, nothing. Uh, wow, black card came back around. I think black's open and just wasn't heavily represented in these packs. Yeah, walking force, for sure. Log stomper, great. Basically, it's an esper life. Ooh, gin of wishes. You know, one time I passed a Gin of Wishes. I shouldn't have done that. Plague Mare is pretty good. Um, three mana, two, two, that gives all your opponent's creatures minus one, minus one. Also, can't be blocked by white creatures, which is sometimes relevant. Uh, I would happily take this, but since blue is already looking kind of open, I think we're supposed to be blue-black. And if I'm already in blue and you're going to give me, Vasco de Gamer, a Gin of Wishes, I'm going to play the Gin of Wishes. Um, if I really feel strongly incentivized not to be in blue, I will pass it. But it, you have to pretty much be there, because I really like Gin of Wishes more than I'm supposed to like Gin of Wishes. Um, other notable cards, Poison Tip Archer is pretty good. You know, not, not all of the uh, multicolor uncommon cards are created equal, right? Like, I think that... Uh, what is that one called? The red-blue one, the something, like Horizon Drake or something like that. Uh, I think it's pretty weak in this format. There have been other formats where it's pretty good, but, like, I don't think this is one of them. Uh, Poison Tip Archer is pretty good. So, for four mana, you get a 2-3 reach and death touch, so that means it can stop flyers, it can stop big flyers, because it can trade with any large creature it gets into combat with because of the death touch, so it's a nice combination. You can block their dragon or whatever. And then, uh, whenever another creature dies, your opponent loses a life. So, if they're trying to get aggressive and trade with your stuff or whatever, they're gonna pay a bunch of life for the privilege of doing it. Um, everything else in this pack is sort of meh. I mean, Droid of the Cowl is good. Green does not seem to be where we're at. Epicure of Blood is good. It's definitely not better than, like, Plague Mare Origin of Wishes in a blue-black deck, even if we want some amount of life gain and payoffs for it. Let's take a big flying sweet guy! Mm, okay. Ooh, Meteor Gold. Hmm. I think I'm supposed to take the Meteor Gold. So we have Fraying Omnipotence. I don't think this card is good at all, but I think it's less good and limited. Each player loses half their life, then discards half the cards in their hand, then sacrifices half the creatures they control round up each time. There's certainly situations where this is good for you, but there's probably as many or more situations where it either doesn't do anything or is actively worse for you. What kind of, like, island is, like, actually in my deck? Um, so, like, if, like, Meandering River wheels, and there was one in the last pack, too, oddly enough, like, those would be great, because there's a reasonable chance we still want to play the Regal Bloodlord, even if we're base black-blue. Uh, Snapping Drake is good. We've already got a decent number of flying four drops, so I don't think I'd prioritize that. Disperse is pretty good, but as expensive as Meteor Golem is, it's an answer to anything. 
I mean, it's a very powerful card. We do also have Rise from the Grave. So, like, we can play it, kill something, trade or chump block with it, then Rise from the Grave, have it come back, kill something else, and then maybe trade or chump block again. Like, I think there's enough incentive to be playing this in this deck. Like, I would like to have some more cheap removal to justify playing a 7-drop. But, like, we have some really strong late-game cards. We definitely are looking to be a later-game deck, and a card like this is a very powerful reason to be doing it. Uh, okay, what else we got? Ooh, Sky Scanner's pretty good. So, Bone to Ash is sort of removal. It's a little clunky because you have to hold up the mana at the right time in order to be able to, like, remove the creature you want to do. It's a little better if you have effects that, like, bounce things, and there's a couple of effects in the set that do that, but not, like, a ton. Uh, totally Lost is okay, but expensive. I would I would definitely take Bone to Ash or the Sky Scanner over that. Probably even... Well, I don't know about Doom Dissenter. It's... whatever. Uh, another Druid of the Cowl. Someone who wants, like, a very medium speed but pretty solid ramp strategy? This pack's, like, payoff for them. Like, somewhere at this table is probably a pretty good red-green deck, but we're... We're a Jin of Wishes, Regal Bloodlord, Rise from the Grave deck. Uh, I think I take the Sky Scanner here. So we don't have a ton of early plays. This thing's a flyer, which might be relevant. It seems like our deck wants some amount of, like, just being in the skies. Uh, it's also nice just because, like, it's early enough that you can just sort of play it out, draw the new card, smooth out your curve a little, either, like, draw a play for the next turn or draw the land you need to play one of your more expensive cards. It's, it's a kind of card that's really strong in this deck. If there wasn't something that was, like, close to a solid removal spell, it would be a pretty easy pick here. I'm not sure how highly I'm supposed to value Bone to Ash, but in other formats where I've seen it, it hasn't been amazing. So I think Sky Scanner is just a little more reliable in this deck as it looks so far. Right now I'm going to move Gallant Cavalry to the sideboard, but there's not a 0% chance that we play it. Uh, here's another interesting pick. Omniscience? Just kidding, we're not playing Omniscience. Um... So it's between the Ave and Wind Mage. I think we're still a little light on creatures. So we've got Neonate. Corpse, we're not super happy to play. Any other Hired Blade. Sky Scanner. I guess we're doing okay. We're just, like, heavy on expensive stuff. Which, you know, might be a reason to take the cheap Disperse. Uh, but Ave and Wind Mage is also pretty good. I mean, it's just... It's a 3-mana 2-2 flyer with some upside. If we happen to play, like, a non-creature spell on a turn we want to attack with it, you know, it, it, it gets a little bigger, does some extra damage, or, you know, if we happen to play a counter spell or, or some sort of trick or something, then maybe we can eat one of their creatures unexpectedly. I kind of think this is a close pick. We're not looking to be, currently, the kind of blue deck that wants Millstone. I don't think you take Millstone over much unless you already have, um the the enchantment i forget the name it's not fraying sanity it's something very similar to that um because like i feel like that's the one that sort of puts you in the archetype and then there's cards like millstone that support it if you want to go heavy on it but like if you don't have the enchantment millstone by itself isn't doing you any favors um i don't know this feels kind of close it seems like removal is like pretty hard to get so i think i'm actually inclined to take this disperse it's like a cheap thing. It, it slows them down enough that maybe we get to like our medium meteor golems of the world and whatever. Yeah, psychic corrosion. That's the one. Omniscience is so slow. It's basically only an Azorius to fairy control. I think it's too slow for that deck. That's how slow that card is. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I like Aven Wind Mage, but I do think Disperse is probably better the way the deck is looking to be. Uh, so let's see. This is kind of an interesting one. There's actually a lot of cards in this pack that I'd be pretty happy to take. Surge Mare's okay. It's a pretty strong blocker. It's like, can't be blocked by green creatures' claws is, is basically not relevant. I mean, it has the ability that if it, dam if it combat damages an opponent, you can draw a card and then discard a card. So you can sort of fix your hand a little bit you're flooded or something but it also has zero power so you have to spend mana and also orchestrate the ability to hit them i'm not super high on the horse fish card um but i would take it you know in a lot of situations um anticipate is like nice and flexible it doesn't really affect the board but a deck like this 
is happy to play this as its two drop a lot of the time because then you're just sort of like okay i need to land and i find it in one of the top three so now i can be sure to play all my spells aviation pioneer puts two bodies on the field one of them gets to be a flyer and an artifact if somehow you end up with some artifact synergies which there are some in the set uh, Salvager of Secrets is pretty good, especially if you have a lot of spell-based removal. Currently, we don't, and also we do have a lot of, like, expensive cards, so I'm not super keen to take this over something cheaper right now. Um, Aviation Pioneer is good, but I think it's a little better in an aggressive deck. I think Anticipate might be better. Although, I think it's probably easier to get Anticipates, so maybe I'm just supposed to take the Pioneer, assuming maybe I get an Anticipate at some point. Um, the only other cards in the pack that are worth considering at all are Gearsmith Guardian, which we don't need more fives, and this isn't a particularly good one. Uh, it's not bad, but it's not great. Uh, Gallant Cavalry, as I said before, is pretty good, especially for a common. Um, I think I'm going to go with the Pioneer, but I think it's really close between these two. I don't think the others are close. I, th I think it's really between those two. Um, let's see. Now I could take Scholar of the Stars, but so far we have two artifacts, and one of them's like super late, and so like this doesn't become relevant anyway. I'm not so keen to play this like really mediocre four drop that sometimes draws a card that I want to like take it over. I mean, like Child of Night's not great in this deck. I actually think that. Um, because I'm not super keen on either of these cards, like, I might play either one of them. But because, like, Banefire exists, I think I'm supposed to take the Highland Lake in case I find a Banefire. Um, I, I definitely don't think it's the Desecrated Tomb. I'm not sure if you're joking about that, but, like, again, you have to be able to, like, reliably remove things from your own graveyard. And I think at this point we still only have one way of doing that. It's just not worth building around in draft. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna take this land. It probably seems weird, but like neither of these cards are like hugely important pickups for the deck. I've already got like a decent number of four drops. This isn't a great one. Child of Night, like I think I mentioned before, dies to a lot of things in the format. Doesn't trade up extremely well. Um, there's some value to Highland Lake. May you know, also we could just find ourselves with um, finding like a Nickel Bolus or something at some point, and that'd be pretty good. All right, this is an interesting pick. There's a Submerged Boneyard, which I would not hate. Uh, there's Doom Dissenter, which we could certainly use some amount of at some point. Totally Lost is okay, but since there's like other reasonable picks in the pack and it's very expensive, I don't think I should take this here. Wall of Mist, I don't know how good this is in this format. I mean, there's a decent amount of flyers, but this stops like a bunch of stuff on the ground. Like, two mana, like, stop their best four power or less creature each turn, as long as it doesn't have menace, seems pretty good. Um, we're still a little low on early plays, and it will be a little challenging for us to get to the late game. So far, we don't have a ton of incentives to stay white, so, like, the fixing's a little less valuable to me. I think Wall of Mist is probably best. We also don't have any sacrifice synergies to, like, make the... Uh, guy who turns into a token more valuable. Like if we had a um, ravenous harpy, that might be worth considering. Duress is not great in limited. It's really like a sideboard card at best. Uh, another wall of mist might be okay. I mean, I, I'd certainly there are lots of like two mana cards I'd rather play than like a zero power creature. But this this is very much a late game deck, and so it doesn't matter as much that like I can't attack with this. Um, yeah, I, th I think that's pretty easily the pick. This is like an aggressive artifact-themed card. This is like a mid-range artifact-themed card in white, and we're not really looking to be white at this point, for the most part. So I'm going to take this and maybe be a wall deck. Uh, okay, so we can take the Meandering River here, or we can take Cancel. Now, I think there's enough potential upside to white that I'd rather have the land than Cancel. Cancel's fine, but it's not great. And Meandering River also opens up possibilities of splashing other cards. Maybe we open some ridiculous rare or something, or maybe just, you know, a uh, Take Vengeance or something that's worth splashing if we already have, like, a decent reason to be playing white. And a slower deck has an easier time splashing than a fast one. 
Epicure of Blood is good, but we don't need more fives, and we're not heavy enough in the life gain theme that I would take it over either of the other two. Uh, we got the other Meandering River. Nothing in this pack is really worth considering. Like, Infectious Horror is, like, a particularly bad four drop, I think, and we're, we've already got, like, a decent number. Infernal Scarring I don't particularly like. These other cards are all off-color, and I already said why I don't like that rare. Uh, I'll take a totally loss, but I'm gonna put it in the sideboard because that's not super exciting. Uh, this kind of deck would rather have Bog Stomper, but it doesn't want either. Uh, none of these cards matter. I'll take the sweet Esper Island. Uh, I'll take a white one because maybe we're playing white, but I doubt I play that card. And not a basic land. <sighs> Patient Rebuilding. Five mana, blue and shaman. At the beginning of your upkeep, target opponent puts the top three cards of their library into their graveyard. You draw a card for each land card put into the graveyard this way. It's real slow. It's pretty good, though. I mean, it's good because it draws you cards. It's not great for the milling. But the milling's not irrelevant. They mill three cards per turn. Our deck is definitely not aggressive enough to want something like Dire Graph Ghoul. And I've already said, like, I'm not going to take Child of Night super highly. I would like an Anticipate. I'm not sure this card's amazing, but I think it's good enough. I think it's genuinely one of the better cards in the pack. Like, Knightly Valor is pretty good. It's something I might even consider splashing for, but I think Patient Rebuilding is better, especially if our deck's slow. Like, Shock is good. Rabid Bite is good. Red Green does not seem to be open to us. Angel of the Dawn, good card. We're definitely moving away from white, generally. Uh, I think we're supposed to take this and maybe end up not splashing the Regal Bloodlord because we've already got a lot of expensive cards. See what happens. But, like, just being able to draw a lot of cards in the late game, like, even if we could just stall out the game with our Walls of Mist and whatever, seems good. Ooh, there's another Regal Bloodlord, though. <laughs> um... Now I'm not sure what to do. thing is we just don't have a lot of life gain we have like the one vampire neonate I don't, the thing is like we also don't have enough like life gain effects that we would take like nightmares thirst highly here like i think it's genuinely like between regal blood lord number two which is kind of sketchy um aviation pioneer number two which, like, we don't have a ton of threes. Uh, Manolith, which actually Manolith looks, like, pretty good in this deck. I mean, especially if we're looking to splash white. Well, like, this makes a man of any color. Also, like I said, we don't have a ton of three drops right now. Um, and it also just, like, on three it adds, like, a virtual land to the board. So if we play a fourth land on turn four, then we can play one of our, like, millions of five drops. The question is, how good is Regal Bloodlord for this deck? And by extension, are we splashing white? I think, for me, the pick is probably between the Bloodlord and the Manolith. Aviation Pioneer is good, but I think both of the other cards have a higher upside. What I'm not sure about is if I should be taking Regal Bloodlord. It's a good card, but, like, genuinely the only... It's, like, the only actual life gain thing in our deck. Yeah, the only one we have is this one Vampire Neon. I think it's correct to take the mana live. Like, we could definitely feel silly later on by just getting some more, like, good life gain in this pack. But I think mana live is just more reliable. I could try to take the Aviation Pioneer and wield the mana live, and that's not super unrealistic. But I think Manolith is just so good for this deck that I want to have at least one. And there's not a guarantee that I get one, even though it's common. I'm going to take it. Uh, okay, so that this is the this is the life gate horse. So it's like, can't be blocked by red creatures. It's double white. We're not actually blocking this. Um, 
I think this is... Oh, there is Omen Speaker. Omen Speaker is probably better in this deck than Doom Dissenter is. We're definitely a little light on actual removal, which is unfortunate. But we have some, like, really powerful late-game cards, which can win us the game anyway. And I think something like Omen Speaker that, like, blocks well early and also fixes our draws is probably a little better than this, since we don't have synergy for it. I guess it chump block twice, but it doesn't block well if our opponent just goes wide with some tokens or whatever. Mm, snapping Drake, and not really a whole lot else. We could take another Neonate. It wouldn't be terrible. We're like the Mono Walls deck. I don't know if that deck's good in this format. <laughs> How many actual 4 drops do we have right now? One Snapping Drake, two Fell Spectres, and the Sift. We are kind of hoping to, like, mana lift up to five. Uh, um, yeah, I guess because we're, like, low on early impact cards. Like, our deck looks really weird. I think this deck is good, but it's it's not obvious whether or not it's good. Yeah, I think I'm going to take this. Make Splashing the Bloodlord make more sense. And Splashing the Bloodlord is pretty free now that we have, like, two tap lands and the Manolith for it. There's really, like, nothing in this pack that I want. Um, I guess I could take Macabre Waltz for a removal-heavy matchup. Uh, oh, a late Dwindle. That's, like, pretty real removal. This pack is, like, a bunch of stuff I'd take. Do I get anything back? Maybe I get, like, Anticipate or something. One with the machine's not great in our deck. It doesn't do nothing in our deck, but it does close to nothing. But, like, Dwindle's like, a creature gets minus six power and usually can't attack meaningfully ever again. And if it ever blocks one time, it dies. So, like, that's, like, pretty good late pickup removal. And we need more three drops. Here's another interesting pick. Disperse versus Submerged Boneyard. I think the Disperse is better... Again, like, our splash is already pretty set. You know, we've got the sky scanner to help draw some extra lands. We've got Manolith and two tap lands to, like, fix for the white. We've only got the one card. It's late game, so, like, it's not super important to get insane mana base. Is anyone else alive in chat? No, I think everyone died of boredom of me, like, really talking through this complex draft. <laughs> um, I think Disperse is the best card here. I'm going to take it. Um, Two-headed zombie? Two-headed zombie seems reasonable in this deck. It's not, like, insane. But I think we could use, like, another, like, threatening four drop. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that pickup. Like, again, this body is so generic that, like, the fact that this has some marginal upside, even though it dies to, like, two goblin tokens or whatever, like, I generally value this more highly. Ooh, and we got our Anticipate. Nice. And a cancel that I think probably goes in the sideboard. Uh, I think Invoke is a more valuable sideboard card than anything else. Well, so we, we're not actually sideboarding, right? We're quick drafting. It's actually really hard for me to get in that mindset. Even though I really like the quick draft, like, I'm so used to sideboarding being a real thing. Take a filler three drop that I don't really want to play. Lesser of two evils. Rare draft. And a bad card. Okay. So. Uh, I don't think... Oh, it, like, took the... That's interesting. The land isn't in, but it was like, yeah, you only want one planes for this. Let's get rid of the one planes. Already, I've more or less turned off auto land suggestion. Um... Okay, so now how many cards do we need to cut? Oh, it's 40. How do we feel about this 40? One speaker, two walls. I cut the walking corpse for something. Maybe cancel? How reasonable is that? How many... Got eight non-creature cards. Are any of them secretly actually creatures? Rise from the Grave kind of is. Um... Yeah, I don't know. Our, our deck definitely has some filler cards. I do feel like that happens a little more often in Magic Arena. 
uh, just because of the whole weird AI situation. I like these two disperses. Disperse pairs a little better if you have like a counter spell to deal with something that's like really difficult to deal with. Um, yeah, I think our deck looks something like this. The Regal Bloodlord's kind of medium, if we're being honest. It's possible at some point I'll get fed up with it and switch it out for either, like, Totally Lost or more likely Frilled Sea Serpent. And I'd be okay with that, but I think there's enough upside to just, like, this combination of cards. And, it, you know, it is a flyer and a decent blocker by itself, so it's, like, it's an okay card that has, like, a pretty high ceiling of upside. Um... Yeah, I think our deck looks like this. I don't think we need any basic planes. We don't have anything that actually, like, specifically looks for a basic land or anything like that. All of our cards that could draw into it can just as easily draw into the tap lands. Uh, let's check the colored mana symbols really quick. For blue, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, versus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... Huh, interesting. We're a little lighter on black than I expected. So... Yeah, I think this is about right, because with the with the two tap meandering rivers, we have like ten blue sur sources and six swamps. Plus the manolith. Like, there's a lot of times we don't play Vampire Neonate on one in this deck, but that's probably fine. Uh, yeah, this deck looks a little weird, but I like it. Wish us luck. What do you guys in chat think we're gonna do? Uh, I'm gonna guess... I'm gonna hope four wins. I'm gonna be a little pessimistic here, just because we're light on hard removal. Yeah, I'm glad we ended up with that, like, accidental cancel, though. I think it will help the deck as it ended up developing. The deck definitely has potential. I think it's a trick of, like, quality of draw versus quality of draw. This is not a great hand. Some of the hands in this deck are definitely going to look like this. I think... I think this is a keep. Four wins seems reasonable, five is possible. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. I mean, there's a world in which we go seven. There's a world in which we go, like, zero, obviously. We could just play against, like, a couple of insane decks. I think on average we do something like four with a deck like this. Uh, Regal Bloodlord's kind of a mulligan, though, if we're being honest. I mean, I like the fact that we have Wall of Mist, we have Dwindle. We can cast the Wall of Mist. Any land makes Skyscanner possible to draw into more lands. We do go first. I think this is a sketchy keep, but I want to try it. I don't. It, I think if we didn't have Skyscanner, it would be enough of a difference for me to just, like, not want this hand. I'm not sure about the Dwindle. I guess it depends on what the Dwindle's replaced with. Hmm. Doesn't go great for us. Well, we've got some walls. If they're just planning on playing a bunch of 2-2s, two or like 3-2s, we've got some chip-stopping waves. Let's call us a litmus test. I mean, it's probably a little sketchy to, um, pin your research on just one hand during a draft, but, uh, uh, you're actually gonna play the Sky Scanner first. Give us, like, two possibilities of drawing into land for next turn. Other Wall of Mist seems like a reasonable play, but because I can just trade the Sky Scanner for the Highland game, this seems pretty good to me. Assuming they, for some reason, want to attack all. Ooh, I'm slightly unnerved to see a three-color, uh, deck like that because it, it may indicate that they have a... Vecta uh, says Mahdi, I think, is the red, uh, green, and black Elder Dragon. So I think we definitely just play another wall. It's wall v. wall in this Metapod matchup! Magikarp, use your splash attack. Uh, no, this is Jund. Red, uh, red, green, and black is Jund, is the shorthand. There's, like, names for every, like, color combination of, like, three colors or less in magic. Kind of, like, insider terminology. Uh, okay. Really sure what to make of this start from them. 
Like, this indicates a fairly aggressive deck, as does, like, a 1-drop 2-2. Two -two. But then they're also playing, like, a 0-3 Defender Reap. And this sort of goes in either deck, so it doesn't really help indicating anything. Uh, I think I'm just going to play Drake and accept 2 damage from the Flyer this turn. If they haste something, like, really unfortunate, I'll probably dwindle that thing. Hmm, that's not a great one to dwindle, unfortunately. Yeah, maybe attack. But actually, I don't care that that attacks, because I could just block it with Wall of Mist. They're tapped out, so they can't, like, do anything. Hooray. Oh, Wall of Mist is pulling its weight so far! Um... Can you just play the Aviation Pioneer? I think leaving up the black mana is actually relevant. It bluffs that weird life gain spell, which isn't super useful, but I don't think there's any, like, one mana blue spell you'd want to bluff in this format. I don't know, maybe I'm supposed to trade the Drake. Yeah, I actually probably am. Maybe I should have just blocked with it last turn. That guy's, like, bigger, so that felt dumb, but, like... I think... Yeah, okay. They don't have, like, a sacrifice effect, so, like, it's mildly annoying that I take some extra damage, but, like, it basically three damage, or, like, three mana, three damage my face, and then I get my creature back and whatever. I mean, I could just, like, dwindle their, this guy, but that seems weak. I think this turn, I'm going to intend to block their flyer again. I'm just going to play the patient rebuilding. This should draw me a lot of cards over the course of the game, and they're almost out of cards. So even though I don't have a lot of removal, I might at least be able to set up, like, you know, trades for their stuff until, like, I control the board. Stuff like that. Um, the one... Well, they have a 0-3 Defender Reach. Tagging with the one flyer doesn't do anything by itself, does it? Um, but yeah. Okay. Probably should attack. Probably should have blocked the first time. If I did, their draw would have been a lot worse. They may have a pump spell. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with this. The way this game is looking, uh, this looks really good to me. No lands. Well, that's also good because we got a bunch of their spells. One of them was, uh, what is this thing called? The Gastbark Twins? Hey, look, white mana. That'll be good someday. Uh, Gastbark Twins is kind of threatening. Dang it, just end the turn. <laughs> No attackers. I'll just toggle this. Uh, so it's a 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven trampled that also could just block a second. Oh, good. That's... That's close. <laughs> well, that's a good target for Dwindle, but it's an annoying card to deal with. This is a 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven trample that gains them 7 life when it enters the battlefield and draws them a card when it dies. Ah, and so I lose a life off of that card also. I suppose I could have dispersed that. Uh, huh. I think I'm supposed to disperse that. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I don't love it, but it does have trample, making it problematic to deal with. It'd be awesome if I drew my cancel by, like, milling a bunch of lands or even just top-decking it. Okay. Oh! Oh, that's right. Our deck has two Fell Spectres. And then it has Rise from the Grave. I'm a genius. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna hit him with the nice back. Um, yeah, they're they're probably gonna be less impressed with the with the sportsmanlike conduct when I take the really good cards. That's like, this card by itself, like, mills at a fairly aggressive pace, too. <laughs> like, it's not... The milling effect is not irrelevant. I do think this was correct to take already being in blue and not already having mill strategies, or mill synergies, rather. Um, okay, so... Alright, draw. Because that wasn't my actual draw, I just milled them and drew some cards. <laughs> yeah, I think patient rebuilding is pretty powerful. Oh, and sift. I'm not even sure if I want to play Sift, I'm going to be drawing so many cards. Uh, so... Yes, that is exactly what I want to hold up. And I would like... Black. 
Give me that one, please. One of your finest Palaka worms, dealer. This puts me a little bit out of range of randomly dying. Because I gain seven life. Uh, I don't need to dwindle anything. Can I anticipate at the end of their turn? Also, like, I might just mill them out so I don't actually have to attack, like, basically ever. Opponents at least seem to be willing to acknowledge decent play or acknowledge mistakes. Yeah, I mean, so far I've had largely good experiences with opponents on here. I've had a couple people do something I can uh, personally consider kind of BM, which is like, just, I, I don't think the winning player should ever initiate the good game. In person, it's a little different because you can sort of get a read of, like, the, the rapport you're having with your opponent. But, like, in digital, like, it just comes across like, you lose, and, like, it just seems rude to me. Patient rebuilding for Carnifact. Oh god, no, it's so slow. It's so slow. It's also not an artifact. If it was a slow artifact, I think it'd definitely be worth considering. I don't know. The thing is, like, a deck like Carnifax is, is, like, naturally inclined to be very slow, so you need more, like, early things. Like, the early things are where you, where you struggle to find the best options. The late game ones, I, I think, will come more easily to a deck like that. I think this is the first person I played against using Sarkin as their avatar. I tend to like Sarkin mostly because he's just like friend to dragons. I don't like this as much as our last sketchy keep, but it does have two lands anticipate, which is like pretty good. And also some strong cards and like disperse to slow them down or sort of get them if they're like a, an Aura's deck. I think it's another speculative keep. Well, they're playing green, they might be the Aura's deck. Anticipate definitely supposed to be in Carnifact. There's a good chance of that. Ooh, they have Thorn Lieutenant. Oh, I drew a good card that will let me block the Thorn Lieutenant. And Scry. Wow, two black cards. Nice try, deck. GG. Really glad we scryed two just there. Both of those would have been upsetting draws. I don't know. Sif being a sorcery is slightly less exciting. Huh. I will take this damage, and then I will disperse them. Okay, like, a swamp might be nice at some point. I I'm not telling you how to do your job here, deck. I'm just saying it would be nice. So it does look like they may be a somewhat auras-based town. It just wants me to priority at all times. Uh, they, they have some auras in their deck. So, like, our double disperse is pretty good. Uh, they've played their spell pre-combat, so, like, they won't be able to replay their creature this turn, which is nice. Some additional, like, tempo loss for them. Bounce the creature. I mean... No, that's right. Forgot that this had, like... Forgot what the trigger on this was, basically. So if you target it, they make a token. But, like, I have ways to block tokens, that's fine. Mm, do I sift here? I think I sift here, because I don't have- well, no, I could play the Menace guy. Menace guy blocks a token. Yeah, let's develop the board. There will definitely be a time when the, the board is enough under control that sift feels like a safe option. I also don't have anything I'm, like, super excited about discarding, because we're not up to our, like, max, like, lands that we need to, like, play all our spells or anything like that. Act of Treason is very popular. Okay. I'm gonna sift now. Uh, I'll probably discard Island since we drew multiple lands. Then we're gonna play the Tap Land since we don't need to. We could play the Neonate. Mm, yeah, actually, playing the Neonate this turn does seem pretty good. And it's not like playing the Tap Land sets us up to play Meteor Golem next turn. Uh, or, I, or I do that. Well, wait, explain, Haggis. Why should why should the citizens not fear? Yeah, sh show me your moves. Trump attack? Just checking to see if I noticed I could block. Oh, I see you're here. Oh, hello, Haggis. I didn't see you come in. Oh, right, it has to, like, pay too much mana, get bigger. Sure. Um, you know, that seems like a pretty good dwindle target. If I dwindle, I have enough mana to anticipate, so long as I don't let auto-tap tap me out of mana. I think this is probably good. 
Yeah, I mean, they get another token, whatever. Uh, and I get to play the tap. Was sort of the end of that. I get to play Anticipate and also play the tap. So at some point they'll probably play some big thing since they're green-red. Green-red tends to be ramp and so it probably is like a dragon or something and Meteor Golem will be a good answer to that. Anticipate will draw us into something that does something. Look, a dragon! Uh, oh, they have enough mana to like kill the thing. That's upsetting. I mean, they'll probably kill the 4 too, right? Choose your target. Yeah, it's the 4 too. Uh, okay. So they can get in, like, 2 damage this turn, which is annoying. But, let's see what they do. I'm just so glad I dwindled that thing. Pretty sure we play Meteor Golem on the Dragon. Uh, oh, nope. Not in blocks yet. Block the one that's not a token for ramp. Pretty sure I clicked that, but it seemed to think I didn't. Or they're smiling on me. Ah, we're doing alright. Uh, let's anticipate. Mm, I get to pick one, right? I think Neonate is best here. I have all my colors now. Put one in my hand. Take Neonate. Okay. Island was not a great. Dragon is dead. Dead dragon. A robot literally fell out of the sky on top of that dragon and it exploded. That's pretty metal. So like soon enough we'll have two neonates out and like their attacks won't be particularly good. So we can start, like, draining them to, like, gain back our life total. We're not planning on attacking with that, right? Well, I guess that does things. Um, yeah, I think I take that. It's not great for me, but let's see what we, let's see what we get. Um, okay. Probably end up chump blocking with the wall of mist this turn. A ton of answers to 5-5. Five, five. Yeah, all our neonates and whatever are more important than Wall of Mist. And like Meteor Golem makes the elves not want to attack because they die every time they try. Ooh, they played out their land. Uh, let's go to end of turn, which is one of my least favorite prompts in this uh, application. Ah, a gem of wishes. I don't think I want to play this land. It's possible I should, but I don't think there are a lot of combinations of things left in the deck that make me want to play out all my lands. That was draft two. Uh, so far, this is game two. The first one we won pretty well. Uh, this game is going okay, but not great. I think we're on the verge of stabilizing. I wish put our stop at the end of their turn. As dumb as it is, I will absolutely double block this because like, I can only, like we'll still get to keep the golem. And then like, we'll be able to, again, I think they're, they'll be slowed down enough at that point that we can really start taking control of the game by draining their life with these neonates. And obviously, you kill the djinn. It seems insane not to do that. Uh, drain them for one. At this point, four will likely have mana to do both in the same turn. So if we... Uh, let's do this to save two blue mana. I guess we're playing island, so it doesn't matter. I play at the land this turn because it does enable double activation of vampire neonates. And you know, at some point we could draw our uh, Regal Bloodlord, and now that we have both vampire neonates out, um, you know, we're like gaining a bunch of life. 
we can set it up so that we like gain it on our turn and then on their turn so we're gaining like two bats per cycle that's pretty good does that do enough it gives them plus four plus four they can make themselves into like a one eight my god man scientists didn't stop to think if they should Box. Activate one of these guys. Activate the other of these guys. See, like, as derpy as this one drop zero three is, like, I really feel like there's a lot of value to, like, life drain in this format. Um, I can't actually just attack with the flyer this turn. That seems reasonable. Like, they haven't, like, played anything. I think our life total is high enough. We don't have to live in, like, tremendous fear of a haste creature. Yeah, I, th I think we've taken control of this game. It's possible they have some insane bomb, but we also still have some pretty good cards left in our deck. I mean, do they also have a pump spell? I'll make them show it to me. That seems very reasonable. I guess uh, there isn't a limit of one per turn on this, is there? That That's the thing they're going for. Make it into a 5-8. Oh yeah, 5-12. Sure. There, I take two. It's annoying. I mean, I definitely have things that resolve this situation. Uh, I've flooded reasonably well. Hopefully we can... Uh, so we've drawn four, seven, eight, nine, ten. We've got at least one land in the graveyard, too. Yeah. It's not great. Uh, can't really attack the trick. Well, they can, they can hit me for five, down to five. I hit them to eight, drain them to six. Yeah, I'm, like, one short of being able to, like, race them this way. But I only soak up two damage. I think I am supposed to attack, but I don't like it. Uh, I have to hope none of their cards are good. do this this requires six i don't like i feel like in arena the uh the colorless symbol with a number in it is not often clear in the body text of cards i believe that's saying it needs six mana so they would need like 18 mana to do it a third time so i don't think they're like going to get me in that respect So they go to one, and then they go to five. They hit us to five. We go up to seven when we put them to six. Right. It takes, like, all their mana, so they can't have, like, a pump spell for one of their guys. They're just, like, making sure they're keeping us honest. Which is all very reasonable. Yeah, we can deal, like, one damage this... God, this draws... Oh man, all of my decks want to flood me to death. Um, I think our best chance of winning is still attacking on this turn. So the idea is that we more or less do the same thing as last time. We hope they don't... Well, the thing is, if they get a pump spell, then they can't also activate their really expensive pump ability. If they play a haste creature, they can't pump the thing enough to make it threatening. I don't think they can actually kill us. They, they would need so much mana. I, I think we actually have this. I mean, that's pretty annoying. So they can, like, pump their thing once to have it deal one damage. They can kill, like, one of our neonates. Do they even have enough mana to still pump? I guess they don't, right? Because they need six... So, so obviously target one of the neonates. We'll use its ability right away. So we 
go to eight. I think I don't think any one card can get us here that they wouldn't have already used for some other purpose. Lock. I mean, if they have a pump spell, it's bad for us. Yeah, that's annoying. We still put them to one. What an opportune time to draw this flying creature. Uh, let's attack. They'll have to block with their flying creature. Hey, this. They need to top deck really well. There's a chance they can beat us, but they need to either kill us this turn. Is that enough? Because now they have 10, so they can pump it once. They can make it 5. I think we just don't block and kill them. They only have 10. They need, like, 12 to pump it twice. We go to 2, and then we kill them. And we finally draw that Disperse. Well, we got there. That was that was an intense one. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, we, we flooded pretty hard there when it was very relevant. Even after, like, drawing a bunch of cards, we ended up drawing, like, a ton of lands. And, and they drew a bunch of lands, too, but they had a way to use it, which made it more threatening than us just, like, literally playing land turn after turn. Clam the dollars. Okay. Let's play another one. What's lagging? Is it gonna crash? Is it gonna crash? Yeah, I mean, that is legitimately a game that I feel pretty well about the way I've played, because, like, I've definitely known a lot of people to face themselves in situations like that, like, last couple of turns there, where it's like, you really have to try and calculate every point of damage. Because, like, if you feel like you have to chump block and you're wrong, like, you can really put yourself suddenly losing a game that you should win. Okay, this hand has two neonates and patient rebuilding. It also only has two lands. It's a really greedy keep. But it does also have, like, one of our best removal spells and disperse to, like disrupt what they're doing to some extent even if we stumble a little bit and they're going first so we get to draw first i think we keep this but it's very sketchy i think this is a very close like keep mulligan they're mulliganing that makes me feel a little better about it mm. Scry to the bottom, which is also, like, a little good for us, because it means they're not definitely getting a card they want right away. Chain of Wishes isn't exactly what I was hoping was on top, but, you know. Well, I'm definitely not always skilled at doing math. Sometimes I just whiff hard. Um, rather than activate this turn, I will play second Neo. It's not extremely likely that they will have something to kill both of them, although, as we demonstrated in our last draft, it's possible. That can happen. Oh, perfect. Basic land is an excellent draw there. Then I get to Sky Scanner. I get two more chances to draw land for my next turn. Because I draw here and I draw for my turn. I draw here if my opponent ever passes. They may have, um... Is it Disallow? To... Counter. Oh, look, we drew the land. Oh, it's so good. Are there things that punish people for attacking in this format? Well, there's the destroy a tapped creature. Let's, let's not. Let's not. I was thinking of sending a message by attacking with two zero threes that don't technically have defender, but let's not. Uh, if we can play this patient rebuilding before they have pressure on us, we're in pretty good shape to win the game. That constitutes some amount of pressure. Uh, do I dwindle that? Seems loose. I kind of think I like just dispersing that at some point. Yeah, I think I just pass and disperse. And if they like, I can like hold up my double activation of neonate. I suppose double activation of neonate also like kind of counters their play. Go to counter. And by play, I mean just like the damage from their attack. It doesn't actually do that, but it it's close. No target. Interesting. I think it's probably correct to target the sky scanner, but that's okay. 
I will blue and blue. And activate and yes. Blockers, accept three damage, see what they play. If it's worth dispersing, I will do so. If it's literally nothing, which is great for me, then I will just drain the life. And so I've basically taken one damage and hit them for two. Turn. Um. Okay, so this is interesting. My inclination was to play patient rebuilding first, just because the earlier you get it down, the more value you get out of it. But then I was thinking, like, oh, this guy can block, it can put pressure on them more quickly to simply end the game. However, they're holding all of their mana up. There's a slim chance they have a counterspell. The only counterspell that they can play for one blue in this format counters creatures. So I think by playing the patient rebuilding, they just can't, like, react to our play. Unless they have disperse, which is, like, a little awkward for us, but then they're, like, spending a card to do that. Not sure what they have. Might be dispersed, might be nothing. I'm not gonna attack because I might want to chump block with the Sky Skater in the case that they like. Ooh, totally lost. It's like a really aggressive disperse. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's correct to like do nothing there. I feel like do nothing is the only. Yeah, they figured it out. No blockers, I'll take three. Okay. Alright. And they tap their blue mana. So I'm gonna play a big old creature now. Because <laughs> again, like, unless they get second island, there's like really no threat that this gets countered. So I can do that on another turn. Um, I have all of the weird blue rares. Vaspa. Field Creeper. I am not tremendously threatened by the Field Creeper. Assume they'll tap the 4 4. I think I'd probably dwindle the stag on the next turn. Do I want to block this? Mm, I don't think so. Okay. Tap land. Hold up. Blue and black. I know the thing that's really the only thing pressuring us. So now they can either, like, attack to tap the flying blocker, in which case they do one damage to us, or attack with these two, in which case I can trade there. Yeah, like, I like this position reasonably well. I could play the Wall of Mist, but I want to hold up the Disperse. I think once we, like, stabilize, like, we haven't seen anything to, like, really threaten us so far. Kind of forcing them to make every spell count. Yeah, I, I'm trying to do that. Um, they, they are doing a really good job of, like, working around what I'm doing. But I still think we're in a mostly favorable position so far. I like holding up this disperse is good. I'd really like to get the patient rebuilding down. I feel like it helps us lock up the game, but first we have to make sure we don't die. Because just like dying from an aggressive onslaught by like not being sufficiently prepared is like the way we lose this game. It's like they're not getting through on the ground. It's like this guy by himself. Like that doesn't make any sense. I want to do the patient rebuilding very soon. I, I don't think we need to be aggressive about it. I think that's like a like a trap. Also, we should set this so we can, like, drain a life and counteract their attack entirely. If, like, this is really what they're doing, if they're attacking with their zero power guy to get in one damage, then we can just, like, continually drain them and we control the game. Like, <laughs> that's fine. Okay, snapping Drake's mildly annoying, sure. Uh, here I'm going to not disperse, but use this effect. Again, I feel like it's most important to just control their onslaught. Um, so... Yeah, okay, this works. We can... So if we play our... I mean, it would be nice to hold this up to either 
wait until we get their last card, or they have no cards and we can, like, disperse something and get it back. But I think getting down another flying blocker to just make their attacks awkward is, like, way more valuable to us. This also continues to hold up, like, effects. And, you know, we'll, we'll make them lose two life for discarding a card. We won't always have the opportunity to actually do that. And we got a real spell from them. It does mean their last card's probably something good, but I would have assumed that anyway. And, you know, it's not extremely important to get this online fast. Again, the earlier you get it down, the more value you get. But, um, you know, we also have, like, Gin of Wishes. And it's, like, already on board with an effect. Hmm, okay, what are you going to target with that? Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm willing to do this. It clearly threatens them. Like, it's also our best creature by a lot. So, I think that's probably the best thing to do. Yeah, that's that's what I was talking about, Cat. is the wish counters mechanic. Because, like, I still had a way on board to get value. <sighs> okay. I'm gonna tap this one, I guess. It's, I can block that either way. There's, like, no good... Yeah. Uh, okay, choose a blocker. Hmm. Oh, this is... This is flying. Yeah. Okay, they made that one fly, not this one. Okay, sure. Uh, we take... Oh. Got it. Um, play Genovich. Alright, now, as long as they don't top deck ridiculously well, we'll probably stabilize in a turn or two, I think. I mean, it's pretty annoying that they can still attack with this thing to tap our horde for, for now, but, like, next turn we'll be able to, like, play some derpy crap. I mean, again, so far I feel like they have drawn pretty well. Like I said, they've been able to sort of play around what we've put in front of them. And our hand's been pretty good. Um, so let's see. Yeah, I don't think I'm supposed to go that low, so I think I'd chump block with one of these new hands. Or no, he made this one flying? Yeah. Yeah, I guess we just have to take six unless we want to... Uh... Block a three power. We're supposed to do that? Maybe we're supposed to do that. Let me take four down to four. Yeah, that's annoying, but okay, that helps. That definitely helps. Uh, who wants to tap that black man at all times? It's called bluffing, kids. Do it sometimes. So, I think we'll disperse the Corsair at the beginning of combat. If I can remember it. Like, I can't set a stop for it because they cluster everything together in this game. But... Uh, okay, we are not in the main... So that means that we're at the point where I can bounce this, and their attacks are awkward. Uh, Wall of Mist is unfortunately not great in this situation where they're, they have like a bunch of flyers. Um, yeah, I think we just double chump block here. Drawing our own meteor golem would be pretty good. Land is not great. How much land do we have? We have seven. Uh, I think we're just supposed to wish for something. Let's 
two, three, four, four or five. It's four. Okay. Wish. Awesome. Cancel off the top. Great. Good work. All right. Well, unfortunately, they just pressured us a little too hard. I think we were really close to stabilizing that game, but um, their draws were just too good. Like, our draws were, like, a little awkward. That totally lost, set us back a good amount. But on that turn, I don't think that there was a reasonable... Like, anything we would have done, they would have totally lost. They, they clearly had no, like, creature of their own to play on that turn. So even if we had, like, dwindled their thing, then they put the dwindle back on top. It, like, I just... That turn was really bad for us, but I don't think that, A, we had any realistic way of playing around that, and, and, and B, just, like, I don't think there was a better play than just trying to, like, play out our cards. Because, like, you know, even we could have played the, the better blocker in the form of Gin of Wishes, but just would have gone back on top. Like, anything we would have done would have been a permanent that just went back on top of our library. We lose a draw. Um... They keep attacking us. This hand is terrible. This is an easy mulligan. It's like some expensive cards in all three colors and only swamp. Apparently we're going first. Um, this is definitely better. It's probably a keep. It's not great, but it's a keep, I think. Neonate on top is good. It's not great, but it's good. No, that's right, I don't actually get to play it on turn one. That's a little rough. Um, since I don't have to block something, like, now, I'm gonna just anticipate on this turn. Because, like, I can always... Defender has advantage, where, like, you generally get to see the thing that would be attacking you first. Oh, look, it's the Dirtle Mirror. I wonder if we win the Dirtle Mirror. I think generally we do, but our... Removal could be outclassed by a better deck. Ooh. Ooh. I think we're supposed to take land. Aviation Pioneer's like good and all. But like Manolith seems a lot better in this situation. So we get to Manolith, then play Vampire Neonate. Is it struggling to figure out how Command of Any Color works? Uh, and so, you know, next turn, we can either play the next Neonate and drain them, uh, or we can draw land and play the Patient Rebuilding and hopefully don't get totally lost. Uh, I don't think that happens a huge amount of the time that you play that on five. So hopefully we don't see that again during this draft. Uh, you know, or we can also just not draw anything, which is fine. We have the option of playing the Two-Headed Zombie. Um... Arguably, it puts more pressure on them, but if they just, like, play another creature, it just sort of, like, nerfs our thing. I think it's actually better to play the Neonate here. I wonder if they'll actually counter it. It'd be, like, kind of aggressive. Um, yeah. Set this. Toggle end turn. Two. Yeah, I mean, like, some, ga some games you definitely just lose to the draw. I mean, that's usually why Magic is played in matches. Uh, well, good Diamond Mare. Mm, I think they are a very similar deck to us. But if we get Patient Rebuilding online, which we can if we draw a basic land, then I think we're... I think we're in the driver's seat, at least. I don't, I don't think that, like, suddenly makes us favored to win, but I, I think... Uh, having access to that effect relatively early in the game generally puts us in the driver's seat. Will you respond? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, you got it, man. I don't think I love that play by them. They're, that sort of suggests to me that their hand is, like, awful. Oh, hey. Sky Scanner. Ding! Hey, a land. Ding! Vampire Neonate. Additional ding! Hmm. 
Yeah, let's hope that they... Well, let's hope patient rebuilding resolves, I guess. Like, it, it, like literally imagine last game if patient rebuilding just resolved. Oh, that's... Don't love that. Um... Gosh, I wish I had, like, one more mana. If I could play the two-headed zombie and also hold up Vampire Neonate, I'd be pretty happy to do that and not risk running Patient Rebuilding into literal Totally Lost again or, like, a Counterspell. I think I'm supposed to play the two-headed zombie here and not be happy about it. Uh, patient Rebuilding is just too powerful if it resolves, and, like, this is very suspicious. Yeah, I'm not sure what... This draw is... I'm definitely gonna play the zombie. Oh, I do have enough mana? Is I not counting the mana list correctly? Oh, cancel. That's that's totally fine. Um, Because, yeah, I, like, cancel is exactly the card I don't want them to play on patient rebuilding. So that's, that's perfectly fine. I think their hand is bad. The fact that they, like, snap, canceled that, even though, like, it's not great here... Um, and the fact that they, like, dispersed a vampire neonate, like, all of that kind of suggests to me that, like, they're really just trying to keep us from getting too far ahead. So if we can resolve the patient rebuilding, that'll be exactly, like, their worst nightmare. Um, plus, you know, we're, like, pinging them with Sky Scanner, and, like, we're... It's gonna be, a, like, a derpy slow game. Uh, like I sort of said from the start when I saw their colors and they played a wall of mist on turn two, but... Uh, I think we're reasonably well positioned. We have drawn our Meteor Golem. We're like one land off playing that when we need to. Never mind. We're there. Um, I think I'd play Island first just in case they want to like disperse a Neonate. Um, in response to this. I mean like maybe they just have another can cancel and GG but like barring that like, suddenly we're doing great. Great. Awesome. I mean, they could disperse it or totally lost it or whatever, but, like... I mean, it's, like, way more fun to resolve patient rebuilding against, like, you know, black-green or red-black especially, because, like, red-black is, like... Oh, I didn't attack. Oops. Red-black is, like, basically known for, like, not being able to touch enchantments. No. Oh, wind speaker? Yeah. All right. Hilariously, anything they scry to the top is just gone, though. <laughs> so, like, they should... Like, scry doesn't, like, do anything now. That's really funny. Like, it's not even like they should scry it to the bottom, because, like, then... Yeah. I I'm curious to see what they scry to the top, but it it's gone now. Or it will be when it's our turn. Yeah, our dirtily deck... Uh, yeah. No, that's acceptable. I don't love it, but, like, it doesn't, like, threaten us in any meaningful way. Especially when we forget to attack with it. Um, this doesn't feel like a game that's going to be won or lost by one point, but if we do, then obviously I look stupid. Um, yeah, we drain them. It's our turn. What did they scry? They scried Essence Scatter. And they lost Tezzeret, which is a good card to not have them draw. Um, so I can do... Yes. It has to be exactly this way. I can't make auto-tap better. So I just do this. And now we start getting bats, like, many turns. Like, again, I think we have similar decks, but, like, our draw is, like, way better than theirs from the look of this. But, like, their deck also has Tezzeret, which is insane if it resolves. Like, that card is bonkers in this format. There's just, like, not... S sleep? I mean, yeah. Okay. I see where you're going. Oh, we'll get to get in for two. Oh, they did an attack. Cool. <laughs> uh, so we milled a land, a cancel, and a two-headed zombie. You got it. We don't get to use our mana to drain their life, but we do have Disperse. Uh, why is this not... Shouldn't it be glowing? Yep, whatever. Oh, draw. Right, that was our that was our upkeep draw. That wasn't our real draw. Let's not get confused now. So let's, let's just casually play a Gin of Wishes. <laughs> After just free rolling some cards and whatnot. 
Uh, this doesn't block very well, for sure. Okay, yeah, they conceded to casual chain of wishes with patient rebuilding resolve. I appreciate and respect that. Cool. All right. Cool. All right. Got up to three wins. We're getting there, brothers and sisters. Oh, I know it's late. Anyone still in chat? I don't begrudge you for lurking. I'm just curious. I know I run this risk as a small-time streamer who's uh, streaming relatively late at night. I mean, mono red aggro doesn't really generally exist in, like, limited formats. Uh, oh, this seems a little awkward. Pony goes first, huh? Hmm. This is another close one. Unfortunately, we haven't gotten, like, a ton of just, like, easy, keepable hands. We've made the most of most of our hands. Heading to Hushabai Mountain. Well, uh, you know... Feel free to take shore leave whenever you need it. Uh, feel free to let me know any of your thoughts on the game, or any questions about the game in general. I always appreciate just teaching people the game. Uh, I think this is a mulligan. Yeah, we just don't have enough early stuff. Like, if we had... If we had the swamp to play Neonate, or we had, like, Wall of Mist or whatever, I think I might keep this. Uh, this is a much better hand. <clears throat> disperse. Do I want disperse? And I think not as much as I want land, but I do get to scry too when I play Omen Speaker. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just don't want to get overrun by like an Aura's deck. That seems like a way that this like slightly awkward hand just loses. So let's not. What's, what's that thing from... I guess, what's that thing from the Marvel Universe of, like, sun's getting pretty low in the sky there? <laughs> yeah, okay, we're playing a green-white Auras deck. I'm feeling a little better about this dispersed plan. Um, so let's see. If they play the plus one, plus one, and trample thing, Wall of Mist is a little better. Start there, I guess. I mean, I, eh, maybe it's better to just play the Omen Speaker anyway to, like, fix my draw. Because, like, now if I just don't draw land off the top, it's a little, a little loose. Really seem to have some, like, PTSD about that one time our green-white opponent had, like, literal four auras on the field. And we were, like, so close to stabilizing. I just, like, really want this disperse and I really want to take early damage. Alright, I mean, if they're just playing a 1-3, I feel pretty good about it. I don't think they can get us with one planes in this format. Yeah, just a free attack because it has vision. We did in fact draw the land, that's nice. Uh, I think I play Omen Sme Speaker and am okay just like letting them gain a little bit of life since they're not showing anything that really... Two items. Both of these on top? I think the answer is yes, but begrudgingly yes. Yeah, I think that's probably correct. Selesnia so far. I don't think the Selesnia deck's super likely to be splashing unless it specifically has, like, an Elder Dragon. I mean, maybe it could be splashing some removal, like, uh, Electrify or whatever. But I think generally white has... White and green have pretty good removal in the set between Rabid Bite, uh, Luminous Bonds, uh, Hyromancer's Cage, stuff like that. Uh, the um, Take Vengeance. Like, white's removal is pretty good in this format. So, like, generally, I think it's less good to splash in. I mean, especially if this is an Aura's heavy deck. Those decks tend to want to be, like, some amount aggressive. And so, like,. Risking playing the third color and like screwing up your your curve is a little bit worse in that kind of deck Hey, an aura Respect really glad I have that disperse, but this is gonna hurt I mean, I don't 
extremely care about their life total. The nice thing is, like, a lot of the times I've, like, used the Disperse. Um, okay. Uh, like, it's been on something that has that, like, green aura that you can get back from the graveyard, which, like, feels bad. Um, but, like, here, like, I will actually sort of get them. So, let's do attackers and pass the turn. Ah, do you agree with both the words and the things, Haggis? I thought you might have some contradictory opinions about the things. Yeah, that's fine. Like, my things block your stuff all day once you run out of auras, which is like now-ish, now o'clock. Now uh, so let's disperse the, this one, the one that is a creature, and all the auras go to the graveyard. Okay. Go to blocks. Huh. Uh, can't even like play their thing again, so I'm gonna anticipate and uh, Spurs is really good against the Aura's deck a lot of the time. I'd like to have the, the Fell Spectre, but like they have like some dumb card in their hand anyway. I think I take the Disperse. I realize one of those lands I spried to the top, but I wasn't sure I was gonna be able to do that that turn. Um I'm a little sad that we don't get to play the land, but I think that was probably correct. I mean, I can still block their stuff all day long. So I can, like, start draining them, whatever. Probably I'm not playing this Disperse right away. It'd be nice to have another Swamp so I could play the Hired Blade out, but it doesn't really do anything. Yeah, I put the stop on their end step, but I don't think it matters. I'm probably not doing anything. I say, I've always been a fan of words, but it took until college for me to accept things. Oh, okay, so if you like... Yeah, I mean, I know it's, like, sort of a more recent thing, but you still feel like you're trending towards accepting things, Haggis? Yeah, I didn't think the Fell Spectre would have been better here. Yeah, the Disperse was better. Oh, fur, fur. I should have... Mm, that was bad. I should have should have bounced the thing in response so they didn't get the token. Because, uh, yeah, let me just get the token. My bad. I mean, I'm sure I can deal with the 2-2, two -two, but... Just gonna... Actually, I probably should have just blocked that, frankly. I really have some weird PTSD thing with these aura decks. They just sort of get you out of nowhere. Well, okay. If I ever draw a land, I only had a hammer. Stuff is basically a formatic. I mean, the stuff doesn't even really do that much as long as you don't aggressively click through the turn or toggle the end turn aggressively. Got it. I mean, here, it's, like, slightly more relevant, so I'll just have, like, an actual thing I intend to do. Although, maybe draining them is better. No, draining them isn't better. I want I want a three-power guy on the board to contest the one-three, so I'm still, like, stable here on the board. Oh, my kingdom for a land. My opponent just has no idea how, like, hosed they would be if I only had a land. It's pretty aggressive, Selesnia. I really should have correctly bounced that thing in response to the aura. That was pretty bad on my part. Uh, I mean, I think I'll make them have it. So, like, this I definitely block here. Uh, this I block here. This I block here. No, you know, I'm just gonna take the two from the spider. Land or man? I mean, I'd prefer land to mana lift. Inspired charge, eh? So that doesn't die, that does die. Sure. I mean, that's not great for me. But, like, their creatures aren't extremely exciting. It won't take much for me to restabilize unless they have another copy of that card. Oh, come on! Come on! One land is all I'm asking for. It can even be the tap land if you really want to be spiteful, but this is just me. I've drawn three five drops in a row. I think the rise was not consecutive, but I've drawn like most of my five drops now. And just not a single fifth land. It's not even like, oh, I can't play two spells in one turn. 
so we block, we block to this, we block it too. We drain them. Okay, thank you for the land. First off, thank you for that. Um, I think we just played Gin of Wishes. So we, we're probably spending our mana for a bunch of turns, so like, Regal Bloodlord isn't like, better than that. Like, if we were going to be having enough mana to drain them and, and activate the Regal Bloodlord and make bats and stuff, then yeah, probably better to play it first, but we're crimped on land, so yeah. Yeah, that, that's what I usually say is like, if I really need land, I'm like, give me like forest, I don't care. Give me, give me wastes. Wastes are the basic don't tap for colored mana land that they made for, uh, there we go. That's what Vasco wants to see. Uh, and let's patiently rebuild. No, let's let's make more blockers. Because, like, this way, if we draw another untapped land, then we can patient rebuilding and drain them and then really start going to town. I just need, like, another couple turns where they don't, like, go over the top. That Inspired Charge was pretty good. It would not have been better to take more damage, but I think it was right to not block with the Neonate. I was expecting a pump spell. I was not expecting that. Yeah, even so pure and like really not being too picky. Uh, okay, so play patient building. So we'll start drawing extra cards. This should ensure our land drops, and then eventually we draw into the golem to kill something. We're like getting there. It's slow going. We're not too far from being ahead enough to stabilize, and that's that's where I want to be. Beverly Hills, that's where I want to be. Hey, hey, living in Beverly Hills. If you don't know that song, I am the crazy. Pr oh, I I literally did the thing I like scolded that guy for before. I'm supposed to do that during their main phase. Whoopsie doodle. Um. So let's see, I have six, seven, um, I think let's, let's, this turn, let's just put out the two bodies. I would like to be able to, like, drain them and use the Jin's wishes. All right. Oh, wait. I, like, goofed. I just, like, flooded, I just, like, wasted that mana. Um, all right, let's play our Sky Scanner and just pretend that that didn't happen. And we drew land, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Better to be lucky than good, always. Haggis knows what I'm talking about. He also wants to be in Beverly Hills. And this time I've correctly said a second main phase stop. Mm, guys, it's late at night and it's been a long day. I apologize for the misplays. Uh, let's do the this and correctly earn the bat token. Ray. Must be the money. Cool. We drew a cancel. That's real good. Now we have to set multiple stops on their turn. So now we have seven, eight. So I think we want to like cancel or drain and wish? No. I want to wish now? Wish now and cancel or drain? Yeah, that's probably correct. This is. Uh, yeah, I need double blue for this, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. I can even play the land. How sick is that? Uh, I actually need you to tell me. How sick is that? Um... Yep, no, this is fine. I also really need to get in the habit of accepting upkeep triggers. For some reason, that has always thrown me off in Arena. This cancel's really good, it just stops them from doing something bonkers at some point. Like, the thing that will, like, win them the game we can now stop. Unless it's Banefire, which they could be splashing for. Uh, so first we do... This. And we save the cancel mana because we're bosses. We're probably gonna mill them before anything else happens. 
Uh, have they milled something I want to bring back with my Rise from the Grave? No, they have not. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's play a Meandering River. 15, they're at 11. Probably don't want to draw a ton of extra cards, but yeah. Um... I guess we'll just Gen of Wishes again. I did play my land first this time, but I shouldn't have. Sift. Do I really want to sift? I mean, every upkeep, I mill them for three. This is probably fine. What do I discard here? Wall of Mist? Fell Spectre? Yeah, Fell Spectre seems real bad in this matchup. I mean, two-headed zombie doesn't do a lot for us either, but, like, I think I'd rather have the land, and most of the other cards are more relevant. I don't actually need to stop at their end step anymore, right? I had some reason to do that. I don't remember what it was now. I think it was the wish, but I think I prefer to wish on my turn, usually. Largely because of the land. <laughs> Wouldn't know misplay if it tapped me on the shoulder. I'll usually point them out, except when they're either really minor or I'm just playing real bad. Finish day two of a comp stomp in six. That sounds intense. Did it go well for you? Yay, our opponent conceded! Woo! God, these are, these are some long games. Is this the highest rank you can get in limited? We've stopped, like, going around the circle. It doesn't feel like it is, because it doesn't have, like, a cool enough name, but whatever, I'll take it. Next game! At this point, everything is just gravy. This is about where I thought we could get. It's definitely possible for us to get higher, but like, you know. You, you most of you saw that one game against the blue-white deck that really just barely eked past us. That was, a, that was a tough one. Our opponent is Vice 13. Yeah, it's gonna be a long night, folks. Might end up canceling tomorrow's stream just for my own sanity, but I'm I'm very happy with how tonight has gone, which is great because this week has been real depressing and I was super bad. So we get Tapland into Wall of Mist or Neonate. We've got Neonate and Bloodlord and Two Headed. Yeah, this this is a piece. We finally got ourselves an easy keep, and somehow we'll lose this game. This will be the one we lose. Uh, nice, another option for four drop. That's pretty good. Can stop some like small flyers or whatever. Uh, Alright, what do we want to do this turn? Wall of Mist or Neonate? I think Neonate. Yeah, play Neonate. I mean, it pretty much gives the game away of, like, we are some sort of Esper deck that also has life gain in it. Well, you know. Okay, Shutter Snipe is... Oh, sorry. Anticipate, sure. Maybe I just anticipate this turn. No, I think I Wall of Mist first, and then, like, anticipate next turn, like, on my turn, if I don't get a land off the top. And if I do, probably just hold up the Anticipate, or maybe just play, like, a real card. Okay, I think our deck is well matched against what I'm seeing here. Uh, I do think I like the Sorcery Speed Anticipate here. I'd like to hit my land drop. If possible, yeah. Common speaker and land can go bye bye. Do this, uh, play like activate neonate or play wall. Let's activate neonate, I think. It's like again, like red does have haste creatures, so like they could play the minotaur and make our. D deal a little bit of damage to us, certainly. But, like, again, like, I just have the initiative on, like, Wall of Mist when I see enough things that I need another blocker for or something. Let's see. Uh, is it attacks? Sorry, I'll read your posts at the end of this. Oh, interesting. Um. You know what? I'm gonna... That's why, why can I do this? That one. Uh, I will not block on this particular turn. I'll give them credit for the trick. 
it might be the like plus three and first strike in which case like this is what they want to do and they'll use it maybe they have nothing and you know i'm just playing cautiously whatever i do like playing wall of mist next turn if they're willing to attack that aggressively and they're holding up all their mana uh, or I could just play Patient Rebuilding. Or I could play Regal Bloodlord and start getting value the turn after that. Yeah, our life total's high enough, I'm willing to do that. I could have something that kills it outright, but I'm willing to play this now. Burn, not attack. Okay. So, caps. Oh, well, captured the entire system, bonus system. Half the AIs were defeated, all caps were. 8, 10 level. Cap is 10. Uh, over 300 bombers fighters. Lots of support ships. Not bomb, giant lasers, and death resource vacuum think space balls. Nice. Uh, interesting that they didn't attack that turn. What the, What on earth does that represent? I don't even know. I think I play Wall of Mist. I think I play Neonate. So that next turn I can just like drain on my turn, drain on their turn, bats, 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 bats. And we'll set the correct stop. I'm like super not interested in putting my like bat generator in combat if I don't have to. For the record. <clears throat> <laughs> Combat, attack, block, uh, drain. I made a bet. Okay. What do I want to do this turn? I'd like to play the patient rebuilding, but I think I'm supposed to be super cautious. Um, because I get to have, like, a bat to chump block with worst case scenario, and I can hold up disperse worst case scenario, I think I will just sorcery speed a neonate activation, so they get an extra bat this turn, set the stop on their turn, and pass. What is the sorry? Aims with large caps. Oh, I see. Large, like, resource and crew caps or whatever. This game sounds very complicated. <laughs> Uh, have you ever played Twilight Imperium Demolition? I wonder what you would think of that. Uh, wow, they're just like doing still no- what are they waiting for over there? I'd love to like draw another land so I can like hold up- well no. Maybe I should just play the patient rebuilding. Yeah, I'm gonna play the patient rebuilding. They're black red. They can't like do anything to the enchantment. I will take a turn off to basically win the game if they're gonna keep playing like this. I have, like, so many blockers. Like, their deck seems, like, really poorly positioned against others. Which is something I feel like I don't get to say as often as I'd like. Like, I just, I just cannot imagine what it is they're doing. Is their hand just, like, all shocks? Is their deck just, like, 20 copies of shock and they're trying to, like... Burn us out from full. Wow, would you gin of wishes? Oh, wait. Yeah, no, this is fine. This is my upkeep, though. I'm so bad at this. Like, it's just so weird to me that it only holds priority on my upkeep when an upkeep trigger happens. For some reason, that just boggles my mind. Like, if I always had to click past upkeep, I feel like I would be used to it. Uh, if I just like didn't have to click past the upkeep in that case also seems fine the problem is like because they have the one flyer like attacking with one one seems really stupid so i'm just like not going to do it um i mean there's there's the possibility that like i like bounce it after generating enough of them to like kill them after draining them that seems like a very realistic way to win the game a large number of bats and life and I'm milling you. I don't actually know what you want. Uh, we milled them for two tormenting voices, three swamps, and another random three drop. And now I get to actually draw a card. Because that's how that card works. Definitely not going to blow the meteor golem on their, like, one flyer. 
Uh, I think I'm going to... I now have 6-7, so I can... Yeah, I think I'm going to play the Manolith this turn and keep up my, like, Sorcery Drain... Instant Drain plan. And then, like, maybe with the Manolith, and if I draw an extra land, I'll be in a position to finally get aggressive. I just don't have any reason to, is the thing. Like, there's just no actual reason why I would need to do that. Like, I'm just winning the game on, like, every possible axis right now. Except, like, poison counters or something. Like, soon I'm gonna have to discarding, discard cards to hand size because I'm getting too much value off my bat generator. That means a giant manta ray that vacuums up planets. Where do I get one of those, Demolition? Uh, Dismissive Pyromancer. Well, it sort of draws them cards, I guess. I wonder what they'll do with that. Hey, Alcadius. Yeah, we got the we got the overlay working. I think I figured out what the cause was. You're supposed to keep this thing running in the background that they sort of suggest only needs to run to set it up in the first place. Like nothing really says that, but I probably should have figured that out by myself, frankly. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna drain you. Uh, enjoy this game in progress, Alcadius. We currently have uh, it's going to be seven bat tokens in play. And we're milling them for three cards every turn. And we have, like, a bajillion cards. This game, I don't think I ever want to cast Sift. It just seems bad. Um... Gin of Wishes? Wait, can I kill them? Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. No, but if I play Gin of Wishes now, I can just, like, kill them by attacking next turn. And this saves all of my drain mana. Will this be the second time someone concedes to us playing Gin of Wishes with a patient rebuilding on the field? No. I respect that. I have a lot of bats right now. Set this stop. Toggle end turn. Toggle end turn. Point being, at the end of the game, I could jump their entire defensive line, eat it, eat their planet, re rebuild any losses, repeat. I think you've more or less, Demolition, described our current board state. Like, at the end of the game, we'll, like, bounce their one flying blocker, attack them for lethal, and have, like, the potential to mill them in, like, four turns. Okay, you got it. He's dropped me to 24. He's going to sacrifice this creature to itself so that they can try to draw a better card. Uh, it will return to the battlefield because they've used that black spell that does that thing. We played it in our previous draft. Huh. Oh no, it has a damage effect. Sure, you know what? That's fine. I'm like, literally, like, I should have done this in response. Oh, it doesn't matter because he's still dead at the end of the turn, and that's what it meant. Uh-huh. You got some goblins. I mean, maybe they're trying to, like, alpha strike with, like, a trumpet blast on the next turn, but they're, they're just, like, literally dead. Don't need to do this on their main phase anymore. Block. Do this. My turn. Mill them for several. Draw a dwindle. Draw a card. Uh, island. Disperse there. Let me just make sure about this. So we have eight flyers, twelve. Yeah, no, I don't even actually need to drain. <clears throat> Combat. Attack. Attack all. Big figure. GG. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, maybe that was just a horrible draw for them. Like, I think even with, like, a better draw, our deck would be, like, favored against their style of deck. But at the same time, like, that, they just, like, weren't able to do anything early on. Like, that's just super rough. Like, they hung in there a while, considering that that was just a, just a bad matchup for them. Um, Alright, maybe we can get 7-1 or 7-2 or something. <clears throat> I mean, our deck is good. I definitely like our deck. It is light on removal. Um... That can be a problem. That's more a problem against, like, the ramp decks or an equal or better sort of similar control deck that just gets their threats out earlier than us. 
Uh, you should go to Duel Academy where they actually teach you how to draw. I never really understood how, like, I, I feel like whoever wrote that in Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, like, doesn't understand how card games work. They're like, yeah, in order to get better at the game, you have to physically practice the art of drawing a card off the top of your deck. That will improve your game. This hand isn't great, but it has some early game and has patient rebuilding that maybe we can play early. the name of the game? Oh, Twilight Imperium Demolition. It's another very complex sort of space-based, uh, it's a board game, but some, some of the elements you're talking about kind of remind me of them. There are your remote's not working. I have no idea why that would be the case, Arcadia. Uh, I might flash in a guy at the end of their turn. I assume they'll attack. In this case, I think I'm okay blocking. Let's see what they do. Damage? Great. Testing the waters? I respect. You got it, friend. I'm just gonna poop out this flash guy. I don't know if I'll need it. Uh, is $104 the cost of Twilight Imperium? I can believe that. Let's play a flyer. That seems like a good match against what they're doing. We got the ground locked up. We'll go over the top. Maybe we draw a basic land and just like, just hurl the patient rebuilding out. Again, we're against red black. They don't really deal with enchantments that well. What to make of that? I'm gonna put my hired blade in front of it because I'm okay trading. Okay. Chad is broken. Okay, the other one. Why would you play the haste creature post combat? Okay. Um. Now I think I blocked the Minotaur with Drake. Like, patient rebuilding is just its own win condition. You're like, well, it draws me cards and makes them die. I'm not super bothered by. Yeah, that's fine. I'm not sure what their plan is. Like, oh, no, that's legit. Oh, I see. That's probably what they were trying to do last turn. Oh, that is what they were trying to do. That's why they played the Minotaur post-combat. Is because their plan was, like, if I blocked a 2-2 with a 0-3, they were going to finish off with the archer. Uh, that's cool. Well, I have enough mana to drain them. So it would be better to hold up blue, but it doesn't matter. Uh, nope, that's fine. I'm really happy to, like, trade off and whatever. Like, I, I just want to get their hand size down. After a couple turns, patient rebuilding will statistically, like, put me up on card advantage. I've got pretty good cards in my deck. Like, if they have to lose tempo and spend cards in their hand, like, you know, killing my two-headed zombie in combat and saving their guy, fine with that. Oh, actually, no, you know what? I'm not going to block the 2-2 this turn because they might use that black uh, return this guy from the graveyard trick, and if they do, and I have two damage on this, they'll kill my other blocker. Yeah, okay. I don't know that they had that, but like, I'm fine playing around that. I'm just gonna drain them now. Like, we're post-combat, doesn't matter. Card. They're just getting themselves closer to milling to death. Messages were showing in your chat. Mode stopped working. Messages stopped working. The whole world was falling apart. Are they doing a stress test on Twitch chat? Ooh, sift is a sift. Oh, it's not. It's not sorcery speed time yet. Okay. Uh, yes, let's do it. Yeah, let's do this. Yeah. Okay, this is good. Uh, ditch an island. Play an island. Let's play Omen Speaker, because it blocks the 2-2, I don't care what happens to it. And then I get to put Meteor Golem on top of my library. Am I okay with the land? Yeah, I'm okay with the land. I'm okay with both of these. I'll leave them both on top. Um, attackers. Neonate's not going to block this turn. Omen Speaker will definitely block first. 
I don't know. I, I found that the Twitch mobile app is more finicky than uh, than like watching on desktop. Uh, the PS4 app I find to be somewhere in the middle. Yeah, that's annoying. You know what kills dragons, though? We've actually seen evidence of this before. There's a certain kind of robot that falls from the sky. And it, it seems to have a penchant for landing on dragons. And blowing them up. No attack. They're down to 15 cards can play a flying blocker to block the sky scanner eventually doing one a turn i can drain at some point when i'm not playing a seven drop literally the most expensive card in my deck uh that's Ooh, drew some cards land that'd be good off the top do they have anything i want to bring back the dragon's okay but it's not great got the brawl ogre i guess i could take their archer and shoot their sky scanner but that seems um I can... What can I do? I think I, like, play the Aviation Pioneer. Wait a minute. I have eight. If I want to hold up Cancel, I can do five. So I can... Yeah, okay. I can do all the things I want. I can... Wall of Mist. I can... Aviation Pioneer. I definitely want to do this manually because it's important to hold up the two blue. And now I just I can do whatever I want. I mean, like I can, like deliberately throw away the meteor golem to bring it back with Rise from the Grave. I can cancel their meteor golem and bring back their meteor golem. That seems good. I like that plan. Yeah, I like that plan better than my plan. It's a good plan. In fact, it even landed on the same type of dragon. Yeah, I think there's some weird force of magnetism. Like, literal magnetism, because it's a robot made of metal. Also, we finally ranked up some amount. That's weird. I wonder if that was, like, a stress test issue, that, like, we weren't actually gaining, like, rank points. Wow, our next game is seven? Let's do it, guys. We get two shots at this. Thank you, Demolition, for the full array of emotes. I love my emotes. Oh, I'm so bummed about the delay on my sub-badge sketches. I really want to see the narwhals. This is like my life motto. Don't put that on my tombstone. Vasco, really wanted to see the narwhals. I was actually thinking about this recently. I really don't like traveling, but I kind of think I would like to take some sort of, like, narwhal arctic sightseeing tour, like, one time. I think something like that exists. Hmm. Another sketch you want. If this was Island Swamp... No, no, we're going first. I, I don't think I like this hand going first. I like having Sky Scanner Neonate, but Double Island, like, not drawing on my first turn? I think this is a mullet. Uh... Now you're going to bed, anime? Well, thank you for joining us. I know you were sort of lurking, but obviously that's cool. Appreciate you dropping by and for your continued sub support. Well, yeah, I, I, I am not a big travel person. I feel like I was talking about this on a recent stream, but I, I think it was also the lost stream. I think this is a mulligan. The one land is just not enough. Even with two lands and the scry, I think I'd keep this with Skyscan or Manolith. But there's no guarantee I can even play the Disperses. The cancel's really loose in this hand anyway. For a five, I'll take it. The uh, Pioneer's also pretty good. Alright. I mean, I don't love starting on five, but like, for a five, it's pretty good. Uh, let's... I guess we're showing them all our colors. Wall of Mist for mana efficiency, because we don't have other things. But, like, I don't know. I, I I don't know if it's, like, a thing that would let you actually, like, pet a narwhal or something. But, like, that'd be... That'd be cool. <laughs> uh, I think I... No, you know what? I'm supposed to play Swamp. And play the thing I can, like, technically attack with. It seems very likely that our opponent is, like, a super slow, greedy deck if they're playing Rupture Spire. Suggests they're probably at least three colors, maybe more. Maybe they'll play, like, a white card off the Dragon Egg. Okay. Not sure what to make of that. 
Uh, this turn we'll play Neonate and Tapland and attack with the Thopter. Really hope to start drawing into like any of our five drops. Like we have our lands for the five drops, which is pretty good for a mold of five. Again, four mold of five. I like to stand reasonably well. Would I like to mold of five? No. <clears throat> How close are we? Uh, to getting back our lost gem. I think we've at least broken even at this point. Because, like, we're at six wins now. <clears throat> God, my voice is starting to give out. <laughs> this is, uh... I mean, if you combine the two streams, this is definitely uh, on par with our longer streams. I don't know if this ends up being our longest. It's been live for four and a half. Depending on if we play another game after this, we seem likely to, uh... I mean, that's not great for us. Um... I guess we probably aspire to chump block... Or trade, rather, with Thopter. Since it is colorless. So they'll probably tap... The wall, right? Yeah. Okay. And then... Oh, they really did play a white card. I wasn't even paying attention to that. Uh, I think I... I think I maybe disperse this thing. I mean, I'm high on life, but <clears throat> this makes their attack next turn bad, too, because they can't recast this. I like that I just now uh, reflexively set my end-of-second main phase stop for my vampire neonate. <laughs> I probably shouldn't do that, as it gives, like, a mild amount of information. Uh, okay, that's actually decent. It's not my top pick for thing to draw off the top of my deck, but it means that, uh, if I can deal with this light... What? Are they gonna cancel it? Are they going to can... Oh my god, they canceled the Wall of Mist! Like, that's mildly annoying, but, like, I don't think I care. I mean, it depends on what I top deck. If I just draw nothing ever again, obviously I carry don't have a blocker. But, I mean, like, that... That's like an aggressive use of cancel. I'm not sure what this deck is, really. So I can't attack this turn unless they want to trade with the Thopter, which they shouldn't want to do. But I kind of hope they do. Because it'd be really sweet for me. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Uh, drain them for one, build up a little bit of a buffer as we try to... Okay, that's actually another really good draw. Let's save the black mana. Draw something! Anticipate's also pretty good. Uh, we haven't played a land this turn, so I'm gonna... No. I don't think I'll play at sorcery speed. It might be nice to make the land drop, but, like, I don't think it changes much. We'll still be top decking next turn. It's probably better to, like, bluff something and also to save the drain, even though I doubt... I, I think the anticipate has more value than the drain on this turn. The hard three colors, but the really suspicious thing is that these aren't... These aren't allied colors, so, like, they can't um, be playing, like, an Elder Dragon. So I guess they, like, tried to do a go-wide strategy, but blue was open, so it got a little weird. Let's see what happens here. This is a defender. It can't attack. If they tap one of the artifacts, then this can get through. I think this opponent... They're, they're representing that they are savvy enough to know that that's important. I'll happily trade both artifacts for the pump to this thing. Okay, yeah, they correctly did the thing. Um, so we'll take four. I mean, we're at 22. Um, so I think we, we go to blocks. We block here. Block here. Um, I could double block Sky Scanner and Pioneer on a 2-2. No, they'll become 1-1s one after this. That's... I'm not that hard up on life, so I'm going to take 6 here. And that seems fine. 
Um, I anticipate, and now I have like a better idea of what they're doing, so it feels better than the sorcery speed that I was planning. Uh, Gene of Wishes is good because it's a blocker. My turn. Meteor Golem will be good someday, but not now. Not now. Um. Oh, they have Essence Scatter. That's barf. We're still getting cards out of their hand. Their board's still not, like, great against us. Again, these these are now 1-1s. One I mean, if they have another copy of that Bonkers card, like, maybe we, we just can't stop it. But, like, I don't know. Like, they're just not... Yeah, just, like, it doesn't do that much. And now they have no cards in hand. Manolith. We can start draining again. Next turn, if we draw untapped land, we can Meteor Golem... I don't know, one of those horses. I guess this is an elk, right? Definitely holding back all my artifact creatures. I'm really in no hurry to kill them. That's just not what my deck does. Hold this for drain. Turn down for what? They played a manolith. Oops, why oops? Oh, just because they're like flooding or whatever? Or maybe played it pre combat and couldn't bluff a thing? I don't know. I don't think it makes a big difference here. Admittedly, I'm a little concerned about the dragon's horde. Kind of suggests that they have, like, big scary dragons, which makes me want to hold the meteor golem. So I think that's probably correct. I think we'll just do that. Of the many colors they're playing, none of them is black, so they're unlikely to make me discard the meteor golem. It could be splashing a weird discard effect, but that seems weird. Not impossible, but weird. Yeah, that's annoying. But if we ever get our mill win condition online, then they're doing our work for us, right? Eh? That card is ridiculous. I'm really glad I took it. I, I underestimated it a little bit. I thought it would be strong, but like it really just wins the game by itself. Okay. Need a Daenerys deck for only drive Demolition, I'm like genuinely strongly interested in making a uh, dragon-themed deck. I wonder what all the oops are about. Uh for constructed. My turn. Definitely holding this golem. Eh. Okay, I really don't know what the oopses are about. They've definitely drawn a bunch of cards. They're like up five cards from us. We did mulligan to five this game, I'll remind you. Uh, I don't know what that is. Could be a dragon. Nope. Four two. Um. Will they play the other card as well? I feel like if they were going to play this card proactively, they probably had enough mana to do it last turn. Oh, no, it's Spark Tongue Dragon. They're going to kill something. As it turns out, I have a certain robot assembled in my set of skills. Uh, yeah, so they're going to pay three because they have these artifact mana sources in addition to their lands. And they're going to kill, I'm going to guess, the draining thing. But I could be wrong. Yeah, no, that seems correct. So we'll drain them. I mean, we've gotten them down to 13 this way and buffered our life significantly from, like, an alpha strike earlier. I guess it was a beta strike. Hey, Fell Spectre. That won't be good anytime soon. Magnetic Dragon, die! Whoosh! Kaboom! I have like multiple things that block the artifact, or the can't be blocked by Blue Horse. Uh, I think I'm even comfortable attacking with. No, I'm gonna attack with the Unique Thopter. Whoa, what? What is, what is happening? Just, just the one. Just the one. This game is freaking out, man. I mean, after, after getting the client stabilized from the first, um, from the first stress test crash, the game has been pretty stable. Must admit. Yeah, my mom, my mom is basically the mother of dragons. Except, um, one of her three dragons is me, so it's like, is that really all that impressive? It's more like a, I don't know, like a like a weird flightless reptile. It's like two dragons and also, oh, whatever that thing is. So gonna tap, what, like meteor golem. Cool. Yeah. I mean, they're gonna use a. Uh, 
bow or something? I don't care which one of these I block. I like the four damage. Maybe they have a trick. Wait, I, I blocked though. But I blocked it. You saw me click it, it blocked, right? You saw that happen? That's amazing. Well, I can make them discard their card and lose two life. We not be attacking with anything for a while. Okay, I'm so good. This is what you get for drawing cards. Got you! Feel bad! Still five cards up on us. We nice to have our cancel, or I mean our gin die. We could get the rise from the grave to bring that back, or like meteor golem after we trade or something. Lightning strike the golem. Sure. Or... I am annoyed that I like lost four life after block because I blocked. Like you saw me block, right? You were here for that. I blocked. Yeah, I don't think you attack with those. This seems terrible in this matchup. It's gonna be the five. Like the zero five. One three. One three? Why the one three? Uh. No, I guess that makes sense. Um, chump lock. I go that low. Really attacking at this point. Like gained a bunch of life, so I'm not like close to killing them or whatever. Hey, rush from the grave. I mean, I can... Well, I could just, just bring back the gold. I can bring back the dragon and use red mana off the mana lift to kill the stag. Or I could just bring back the gold. But the dragon body is just better, right? So it takes five to rise from the grave. Because it, it's not... Kicker has to be when it's cast. Spark Tongue Dragon says when it enters the battlefield, you can pay three to deal damage to a target. So I think I do that. Mm, I mean, like, my Gin of Wishes and my Meteor Golem are both reasonable targets, but I think Spark Tongue Dragon is the best. <laughs> Yay, Mana Lift! Making relevant red mana since 2018. Okay. We're close to parity again. I'm annoyed about the life loss. Mouse over the pick for all. Oh, XKCD. Oh yeah, you said you said us uh, this one a little while ago. Demolition. I bookmarked it after you did that. Now oh, they're playing another Spark Tongue Dragon. That's really annoying. Do I have a good answer to that? I don't know if I have a good answer to that. I mean, Dwindle. Oh, I see. That's cute. I don't know if that's correct. I think that's actually wrong. Oh, I, get, I see. They're trying to draw more cards. Uh, in case... I, I don't think I actually explicitly went over this. The reason this, like, indicates that they had dragons in their deck from early on when they played it is every time a dragon enters the battlefield, it gets a counter. Then you can tap and remove one of that kind of counter to draw a card. Um, so they're, like, drawing a bunch of cards. They've drawn, like, six more cards than us this game. We did Mulligan to five. Um. <clears throat> Start draining again with this Neonate. Uh, do kind of need to, like, not draw lands for a couple of turns since they've been doing some relevant stuff for a while. Hmm, that's really bad. Yeah, I suppose I could have thought about that. Now we probably lose this game. It was, like, pretty close there, but them returning the card I stole to their hand and then playing it and using it to kill one of our creatures 
probably enough to kill us. Probably. To try patient rebuilding? No. If, if we had patient rebuilding, we would have won this game, like, so easily. Like, this game was so close for so long that, like, patient rebuilding would have just ridiculously easily won us this game. This one. Train for one, so we end up taking... Like, six. Go to... Four. If they, like, also have Trumpet Blast, well, I mean... Whatever. <laughs> but, like, at this point, I, there's almost no way we could possibly win this game. But, like, we had to get, like, fairly unlucky for all of this to go. And why did we not get... That's weird. Oh, it doesn't matter. We are like, super dead. Uh, GG. So, I mean... I don't know. I'm not sure about that playing around dispersed play. I mean, they'd already played at least one. Um... It certainly would have been better for us if we brought back our golem, but at the same time, like, the flying on the creature we brought back felt relevant to me, is, is the main reason I made that decision. Like, if they if their deck hadn't represented, like, some amount of flying we had to deal with, then I, I think I most of the time go with the golem there, which ends up being better, but, like, I, I think you just can't, like, play around that at that point. I mean, we're, we're like, pretty far behind at that point in the game, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I mean, like, again, if we just draw on, like, patient rebuilding, or if our, um, Gin of Wishes hadn't gotten countered, or if we just draw on, like, some more relevant spells a little earlier. Like, basically, after the Meteor Golem, we, like, I, I feel like we missed on a couple turns in a row. This hand's a little slow, but it has Gin of Wishes and all of our colors, and we've got, like, a pretty good amount of things to do early that we can draw into, and we're drawing first, so this seems like a pretty easy keep. Cancel's a, a thing I'm reasonably happy to have in my, like, last game of the day. Just keep, like, cancel some shenanigans. Uh-oh, aggressive deck. Uh-oh, not a two-drop. Well, let's hope. Maybe they won't get an artifact and they'll just do one until we draw any creature in our whole deck. Pass? I mean, not what I wanted, but acceptable, I suppose. Yeah. We definitely play the island next turn to play the cancel unless we play, like, a relevant effect on the board. Taken one! Okay. Uh, yeah, we got stuff to do. We pass to them. I mean, we definitely have enough lands to play, like, Fell Spectre and Gin of Wishes. Uh, depend- like, most things I think I might cancel this turn. I might disperse if it's- Yeah, that presents enough threats, like, two bodies I have to deal with, and, like, my hand's a little slow, that I think I still cancel this. It also would allow their creature to attack for two damage every turn instead of one, because they would get an artifact in the form of the Thopter token. So I think, I think it's good to cancel that. We're already planning on spending, like, our mana over the next several turns, so, like, cancel becomes less appealing. And they can discard, this thing blocks their creature, they lose some life. Uh, you know, then we can play Regal Bloodlord, or Gin of Wishes, like, we're in pretty good shape unless they do something, like, pretty impressive. Oh, they missed their land last turn, right? Okay. Hmm... Or two, huh? Hilariously, I think two-headed zombie is the best countermeasure to that. Because it's like, I could play Gin of Wishes and trade with it. That seems bad. I could do the same thing with Regal Bloodlord. I could just hold up Disperse, which seems real weak, because I'll just play it again. No, I should have attacked. I'm, like, so in, like, super defense mode. Play Pirate Captain Vasco in defense mode. Okay, so they didn't want to equip and do the thing. Uh, let's spend all of our mana and play the Gin of Wishes, and then actually, well... No, you know what, this turn I'm not going to attack. Well, if they put the axe on this, it's terrible anyway. Yeah, I'll attack with the flyer this turn. Should have done it last turn, it was a mistake. Um, 
probably not a huge one. I mean, they're stuck on three lands still. Oh, they discarded Inspired Charge. Yeah, they're definitely trying to go wide. I feel pretty good about that cancel on the Aviation Pioneer. There is definitely a time when Younger Vasco doesn't think ahead to the fact that he's trying to play out all of his next turns, and so, like, isn't going to hold up cancel mana for, like, six turns at least, and lets that through and then probably just loses this game. That's, like, one of the, like, higher level skills that, like, I've been practicing in my years of watching better people at Magic than me draft. Super happy to make that trade, my friend. Okay. So if we play a five now, then we still can't anticipate. Uh, so we make their thing a three three. I think I like attack with both of my guys. I, I think we probably out late game them anyway, but like, I'm afraid of no ghosts. It's not like I have life gain stuff to like make Regal Bloodlord like a must protect target right now anyway. So like, I'm totally fine to just like play it out, expect to block, and like maybe they pump and kill it, but like then I still have an awesome board and threatening to kill them with a bunch of tempo stuff to stop them from like hasting me to. Yeah, I kind of thought they were gonna do that. That's fine though. I mean, if, if this seemingly aggressive deck is going to mostly spend its turn to just, like, bounce my thing and, like, not actually stop me from, like, threatening them, I feel like I'm in good shape. Flyers come in. Pies come out. They are chicken pies, not apple. Mm, this looks good. Gonna wish counter soon. The wish counters on Gin of Wishes are pretty tricky. Oh, they got... Oh, they boned to Ash. Ooh. Yeah, that's acceptable. I mean, I will take a small amount of damage, but I don't think they can possibly pressure me enough. Like, even if I'm just hitting them for three a turn, they're at nine. I have Anticipate and two Disperses. Feeling pretty good about our position. Hey, this time I will correctly remember to Disperse before they get the creature token. Captain Vasco learned a lesson. Disperse is really good against Aura's kids. Also, stay in school. I'm just, like, muttering to myself now. It is late o'clock. Ah, yes. I think we're now beating our uh, consistent stream record as we are rapidly approaching five hours of being live. I don't think we've ever done five. equipped to that, I'm gonna disperse again. Like, it's not a super high value disperse, but it does tempo them by, like, they don't get to block this turn. Uh, they've wasted their mana. Uh, rise from the grave. Uh, I'm gonna attack them and then bring back Jin of Wishes. Bob would be my uncle. My graveyard. The Jin of Wishes. Yeah, Jinnah Wishes is tricky because, like, oftentimes, it, like, you usually use the wish counters when you're, like, in the late game, like, in a top deck war, or you're sort of in a, a, a balanced board state, but the cards in your hand, like, don't lock down the game or whatever. Guys, we got there. Are, like, are, like, pretty darn good red-black deck, like, did pretty well, but are, like, weirdly ambitious... Like, Esper Pile with no removal? Got to the finish line. <laughs> Kitty's always playing basketball. Yeah, we just 7 2 Which, like, I'm very happy with 7 2. Didn't even show me what that card was. Who cares? Clam the prize! 950 gems and some packs, which we will verily now open. Ooh. Alright, Colossal Majesty. Great commander card. Not good for constructed. Volley Veteran, I think I talked about earlier. It's pretty good in draft. There's probably going to be a Goblin deck in some set coming up soon, and it's probably going to be pretty good in that. Ooh, Ajani's Last Stand. What a cute card. It represents the time that Ajani, like, thwarted uh, Nicol Bolas' plans on Alara. I really like Ajani. Uh, open a pack. 
Um, we also got a pack for like getting a certain number of wins. Another life gain horde. I really like the art on this card. Can we? I, I didn't address this before. Can we appreciate this for a second? Like we've got this like jumping, almost flying horse with like a weird, barely visible force field, and then a dragon just like stupid horse. Urgh. Can't get there. Poison tip arch is pretty good. Pegasus courser is good. Psy Master Thopterist. I love Thopters, you guys. Um, what else is that? Grave Digger's pretty good. Very good in draft. This guy's been like the bane of our existence all day. Like, this card is like single handedly like won both of the games that we lost with our Esper concoction. Still don't like Surge Mare very much. I like that it is a horsefish creature, but other than that. Another Alpine Moon. Well, all right. There you go, children. That is our second half price 2019 quick draft entry. And sign up for the next one ends in literally 10 seconds. Hashtag seriously dating this live stream. Uh, I'm not going to sign up for another one, nor would I stream it if I did. Uh, I'd have to do it in the next two hours, and I think I would just go crazy. But this has been a lot of fun. I hope that you guys enjoy. Uh, actually, yeah, I think there's a pretty decent chance that Psy would go in the Carnifact deck because at three mana, he's one four, which is a pretty good blocker. You want to be playing artifacts anyway to make your Karn tokens bigger. And so playing the artifacts makes more artifacts because as a Thopterist, he knows how to use all those spare widgets that come out of the Ikea furniture and turn them into a miniature attack helicopter. Which is why I squeal with glee when I open a Psy Thopterist, because he's just so gosh darn cool. Uh, no, we're not making it an eight hour stream. We probably wouldn't even finish the draft before it would, like, force us to end it. Um, but I'm actually, you know, again, I I'm impressed that after the initial stumble, like, there were, like, a couple of moments of lag, but not really more than, like, an average uh, draft stream that we've done with Arena. So, like, once they got the system back online, stress test was pretty successful. Uh, I don't know why it crashed so quickly. It's a little odd. Maybe they just, like, underestimated how many people were like, yeah, I'll do some half-price drafts and free constructed events. Uh, do you want to work on Carnifact tomorrow? Um, I'm not actually sure. I mean, if I'm streaming tomorrow, I think I'll be streaming um, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. Um, I'm not totally sure I'll stream tomorrow because this has been long and... We'll see how I feel in the morning. My voice feels a little raw right now. <laughs> I think that's got to be the hardest part of doing like a 12 or 24 hour stream, right? Maybe most people talk less than me or something. I don't know. One thing is for sure. I'm going to shave soon. I don't know if I shave before tomorrow's potential live stream. I did intend to stream tomorrow for sure, but then oh, it was just so appealing to do another live stream. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up for YouTube. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. This was a this was a really interesting draft, actually. There were a lot of critical decisions during the draft itself, and a couple, like, really tight matches in there where we had to, like, calculate some predictive math in order to not lose a very close game. Um, and sometimes our opponent bounces the dragon we stole from them. But one thing we've learned is that uh, spark tongue dragons are highly magnetic and meteor golems are also highly magnetic with an opposing charge and on that bombshell i will leave you for this evening thank you again for watching hope you've enjoyed this uh magic 2019 quick draft via uh magic the gathering arena words are very hard after the five hour stream and a full work day I feel like this would be less intimidating if it weren't for the full work day. But yeah, there you go. There you have it. Uh, I will see you again soon for more drafts, more streams, more good stuff. Follow me at Vasco de Gamer on Twitter. You can also follow the Renegade Constabulary at The Constabulary on Facebook. Uh, I post my updates to both of those regularly. Or simply follow me, uh, Vasco de Gamer, on Twitch. There will be a link in the description. Probably. I don't think that I've actually thought to do that so far, but I'll try to remember to put those in. And anyway, the draft ends here. Thank you for watching. Take care, YouTube. Goodbye!